it's coming home. Hello everyone, I'm here. We are so back. I may accidentally have gone live on YouTube at the same time. That was an accident. Get over to Twitch. <laughs> he is back. Well, hello everyone. Yeah, I accidentally put on uh, a little YouTube stream by accident, but uh, that's not intentional. But get back over to Twitch, everyone. All right, hello everyone. The long-anticipated Bionia campaign is starting. It's been promised for so long. Thank you, Brady, for the eight months. Thank you, Oil Ball, for the three months. And thank you, Lidoge, for the ten months. We're back. It's Divergences of Darkness Fan Fork. We're starting a new campaign. It's Victoria 2, everyone's favourite game. And we're playing Bionia. But unfortunately, it's a Thursday. And it's actually 9-11. It's 9-11, but with the uh, British arrangement of the date. I didn't actually see that until I just looked down to see that it's Thursday, 9-11. The 9th of November. Day, month, year. Because uh, over here on this island, we use that uh, type of date. I live to the north of the country that we're sort of playing as here. Uh, you know, I... I I'm Scottish, but uh, is it coming home? Well, we're playing in an alt history world here. I'm not exactly playing in the real timeline. I think we can allow ourselves to, uh, you know, suspend disbelief and allow us to play an English related country using all the Bjornia North FC memes. You know, there's really no, uh, there's no Scotland lore in this mod yet. Apart from that little island, Puerto Rico, but it doesn't really have a, a path. Uh, thank you very much for the 38 months real arbiter. It's coming home. 2023-1109 if you're Chinese. Do they arrange it year first? The Chinese one also makes sense. Because uh, 
as long as it's in either completely ascending or completely descending order. But mixing it, mixing it up like the Americans, I mean, what can you put in the month first? The question is, what is the most important thing? When you want to write down the date, what is the most important thing you want to know at the time? You want to, it just makes sense to start with date, month, here. The 9th of November, 2023. If you want to tell someone what year it is, just write the year alone. Uh, I don't know. Um, so, getting into a big debate here, I suppose. But yeah, welcome. I'm back. I've been away from streaming for about two weeks, but I released um, Bavaria Part 12 last Friday. Uh, due to the same break, I'm not going to be releasing the next episode of Bavaria tomorrow. It will be the following week. So yeah, you're getting bi-weekly uploads, and that's, to be honest, I much prefer that to having absolutely no schedule. Uh, I'm not, I'm simply not able to do weekly at the moment. I apologise for the people who are itching for the next Bavaria episode. But I also have a life outside of uh, my work, which this is. Don't get me wrong, this, uh, this is all, you know, the YouTube, the Twitch and everything. It is my job and it's extremely important to me, but I also have to balance it with other things. Which are also important to me. And that's just uh, the same balance that everyone has to strike in their lives. So you'll all understand. It's the singing lady again. Well, we can just sort of imagine there has a sort of female version of the North FC man. And it doesn't sound so bad. Just imagine her as a local football punter woman singing away. It's football chants, you know. It's called me home. It's called me home. You know, it's like that. That's what she's singing. Just imagine it like that and it's not so annoying. It's Britannia. But yeah, this is Bjornia. I think if you've watched a lot of my content at this point, you know what Bjornia is all about. I still will introduce it to you though. Uh, by the way, the football tag is back down there below the stream. Football, as I promised, is back. Also, I've done a very cheeky thing. I've done a very cheeky thing. I've changed the North FC emote in chat to being a sub emote. It used to be a follower emote, but for this campaign, in order to encourage more subscribers who want to use that emote, right? I've made it a subscriber emote. Very cheeky move I've, I've made there. So subscribe to the channel. You know, I'm back after a break. Sub count went down from like 170 to 98. It's now climbed back over a hundred again thanks to a few subs there which is great so buy your season ticket now for your football entertainment the sub i was gifted ran out yeah we need those big uh big gifters back in you know beyond and fc is now chad emo the giga chad emo is and has always been a follower no not a follower it's been a sub emo i mean But uh, it was a bit awkward that I started streaming on YouTube right now. Uh, didn't mean to. You see, the problem was, the last stream that I did before I went away was on YouTube. And I didn't completely set the settings back to Twitch, so... Um, it broadcast... Now, this is some interesting lore, right? Normally, when I hit the live button on Streamlabs OBS, it doesn't start me streaming. Rather, it merely connects me to my YouTube stream interface. And then I click a button to go live on YouTube. But if we go back about three years to 2020, there was like one episode of a Germany stream on the chill server that I was doing, which I had set up waiting and I never deleted it or something. So I went live on a random Victoria 2 campaign from three years ago on YouTube. And that's really annoying and, and strange. Uh, people might have gotten notified. I don't know. I deleted it. So hopefully I'm not still streaming on YouTube. Uh, people may comment on that on the community post. Uh, we'll see. I'm going to check right now if anyone's commented that on the community post for this. Because that's very awkward, but very funny. Um, maybe the notification will help. People come over to the Twitch, people are like, oh, hmm, what? And then they'll see the community post or something, or they'll check Discord. Who knows? The uh, No. No one's picked up on it on the community post.
No, nothing about it yet. I don't know. Um, I'm not streaming on YouTube right now. The last stream we did on YouTube was the Paradox Horror Story thing about City Skylines. I guess this is the first time that I've been live and streamed after the City Skylines thing where we sort of predicted a potential disaster. And that disaster kind of happened. It kind of bore out exactly as I sort of predicted it would. Uh, but uh, maybe they'll, they'll probably fix that game at some point. City Skylines 2 will probably be fixed. I commented on stream. Yeah, that, that comment on your stream is probably long gone now because I deleted it quickly. It was a great stream, that one. It was a bit crazy. We went off in so many different directions. I played chess with Pie Chucker. But anyway, yeah, it's good to be back. It's good to be back. You know, the streams, the classic names that I see in chat and interact with all the time. It's great, you know. So, this is Beornia in Divergences of Darkness. Can I even begin to explain this? Right, in this timeline, England and France united into the dual monarchy under the Angevin dynasty, which is either an English conquest of France or the other way around, can't remember. But in any case, England doesn't exist and they're ruled by the Anglois people. The Anglois people, I'll just load up the game and show you. If any of you don't know this lore at this point, what have I been trying to teach you for the past three years in my DoD campaigns? But just for absolute completion's sake, just to be completely thorough, is this going to be single player? Yes, sir, that's what I've said in all the announcements. And that's what I've been doing for months now on my streams. Just again, for the record here, I'm going to say, I've sort of not, I've sort of quit doing Victoria 2 multiplayer streams. They are stressful, hectic, chaotic, such a, an overload of things for me to pay attention to, like... It's hard enough concentrating on diplomacy, gameplay, microing stacks, and playing the game itself. Uh, dealing with all the other players as well, chatting. But to also manage an entire stream at the same time. And I'm not the kind of person who will just play a game and, and stream and not interact with the stream at all, like certain other people out there. Like when I'm streaming, I need to engage. I can't just show gameplay without thinking I'm streaming, if you know what I mean. Like... In a sense, a style of streaming would be to just play the game, but be streaming, but sort of ignore the fact that you're streaming and just play. Some people do it like that, I think. I couldn't do that. I have to engage, I have to interact. So that's another thing for me to think about. So I can't, yeah, it's really, really difficult to focus on streaming and playing Vic 2 at the same time for me. So I've decided to move into like single player stuff and it turns out that there's an absolute gigantic wealth of single player mods that I've missed out on for years and... You know, it's great. been great to check it out, especially DoD Fan Fork, which is a sort of alternate branch of DoD single player oriented, which has gone and done huge changes. And it focuses a lot on story driven event paths, event chains and stuff. And I've done several campaigns of it already, which you can find on the Spudgun Archive second YouTube channel, which we might be able to link in there. I probably do prefer long MP set, uh, streams as a VOD or video than a live stream. Yeah? I mean... Maybe I could do that, but you know... it's Victoria 2 multiplayer streams have always been dragged down by the rehosting. Really, it's su such a problem. And on the one hand, the rehosts are annoying, and then people sort of lose interest and tune out when the rehost happens. But such important diplomacy can still happen during the rehost, so people might miss it. Uh, people might have been like not paying attention, and yeah. But I managed to get some good Victoria Two multiplayer stream content out there for a few years. It was fun, it had its ups and downs. Well, this is the problem, uh, Tackle Man. If you skip through a rehost in the VOD, you might have actually missed extremely important diplomacy. And that again is why the edited videos are the king, because I can edit through all of it. If there's a rehost, I can cut out the boring rehosting bits, but if there is diplomacy in the rehost, then I'll edit it into the video by normally putting the sort of map over it or putting the. just using the lobby window, putting the subtitles up, you know, stuff that I've done in all my videos.
But something that often doesn't get talked about in the Vic2 multiplayer community is how rehosting and the timing of rehosts can actually impact the game so much. Just say you're fighting a war, and I'm going to go off on a bit of a tangent here, I guess, before I actually launch Beyond Air, but this is really interesting. And it happens a lot, and no one talks about it. So, let's say you're fighting a war in Vic2 multiplayer. There's like three people on each side. If there's a rehost, suddenly, like one person goes out of sync who's in the war just by absolute pure chance, and then there's a rehost. The two sides might actually start negotiating during the rehost because there's fucking nothing else to do. You're rehosting. And then that could lead to the end of the war. But if there wasn't a rehost, it would have just continued until a military defeat of one side. So rehosting and the timing of rehosts can just drastically affect the game and drastically affect the course of events. One example, and this was a campaign I was streaming, it was a campaign where I was playing as Russia in the chill server with Asquith and everyone in I think 2021 or 22. Maybe some of you remember it. Um, yeah, I was playing Russia. We were doing a war for like India or something. And we were having, towards the end of the session, we were playing, we were fighting a massive great war. And towards the end of the session, there was a really good stable period where there was no rehost or no out of syncs or anything. And we actually went half an hour after session end time. No one noticed. We just kept playing and micro in the war and fighting without thinking for after the session end time. And that's the opposite end of this. Because a rehost sometimes is a welcome break to a monotonous, you know, really in the zone microing and fighting. Suddenly it takes you out of it and you go, oh, you know, actually, maybe we don't need to fight this one. Maybe we can piece it out. Whereas if you just keep fighting, you'll just keep going, oh, you know? Lack of the Irish. Thank you, Tackle Man, aka You Can't Cope, for the 10 bits. I think 10 is a cutoff point when it actually gives an alert. Rehost is like Christmas football match in no man's land, yeah. And um, it gets you thinking about that a lot. They can drastically impact, and it leads to some uh, scummy elements where people actually uh, cause the game to crash using some of the game crashing techniques. Or they try to fake an out of sync by typing use in the chat and pausing in order to spark a rehost, in order to do the diplo they need to get out of their bad situation. So you get the random rehost all the time, but then people can also try to cheekily contrive it, which is really scummy behaviour. I've never done that, but I've seen people do it. And I might have been in an alliance where someone's done it, you know. It's scummy behaviour, but it's not even like a game mechanical exploit. It's like a real, I don't know, meta exploit that I would not encourage that at all. It's, it sort of take, it sort of just ruins multiplayer. But, um, and let's fast forward, say, a couple of years, right? And then you have Open Vic. And let's say we managed to get it working so well that you don't really ever need to rehost during multiplayer. And you just keep continuing. I would think, right, imagine, imagine it, hypothetically in Open Vic if you could just play without ever needing to rehost or any instability issues. Victor uh, multiplayer sessions might develop breaks. Let's say, okay, maybe we'll do a, an hour... Like maybe we'll do a five minute break every hour in the session or something if it's perfectly stable. Because people do need breaks. Four hours is a long time. Uh, did anyone see uh, Killers of the Flower Moon, the Martin Scorsese film? I saw it last week. And boy, I, I thought it was absolutely brilliant. But damn, the length of it. Th uh, three hours and a half. Almost as long as a Victoria 2 session. Almost. And there were no breaks in that. And the piss that I had after watching that film was probably one of the most relieving and biggest I've had in my life. I exaggerate there. But, you know, a break during the middle of that film would have been very welcome. A stable Vicky 2 experience, that would be something. Check out the Open Vic project, which has got big updates coming soon. If you have been following these streams, you might have noticed that I did say that there would be a big update in October or something and it never happened but it will happen in November the November dev diary is coming it's done now fucking hell I went on such a tangent there um they should have had an intermission like Ben Hur how long was that and then there's Ridley Scott doing a four hour extended edition of Napoleon well will that four hour version be shown in cinemas will it have an intermission 
I feel like a historical epic which jumps between time periods is the perfect film to have an intermission. I mean, Jesus. The film that has an intermission or two that I can think of is Barry Lyndon. It's got two acts. So there's an intermission between it. And I can't remember how long that film is. Ben Hur is three and a half hours. Oh, there you go. It's exactly the same as uh, Killers of the Flower Moon. Ah, well, Laughing Cavalier. If it's just on Apple, then you can pause it any time you like. And that people can make their own breaks. Chitty Chitty Bang Bang has an intermission. Well, yeah, it seems to be an older tradition that intermissions happen. It's like a sort of... It's like a transition from theatre and opera into films in the past. Where intermissions was just sort of the norm. But then we moved away from that. But now we're getting to the point where fucking film lengths are drastically increasing. To three hours, like Oppenheimer. And they need to bring them back. They really need to bring them back. People's bladders really need intermissions back. Unless, of course... As many people do, you leave for a piss in the middle of the film, but I would never do that, because I swear you'd miss something. But, uh, anyway, fucking hell, what kind of tangent are we going on here? We're not even talking about football. Uh, I feel like we've got... Will Open Vic incorporate the... No, no, let's not talk. Let's not go there. We're not, we're not adding a globe, okay? Uh, but, uh, long films are almost a return to grand scale epics no oh, yeah yeah i mean yeah it's like uh, films are getting longer but i think it's streaming that's doing it film streaming streaming services things being released on that where length of time isn't as important because people can pause it who does bionia start with as far as talent messy oh you mean generals arthur brown he's shite John Carter, he's shite. And he's an admiral. So we start with no talent. We need to we need to get the youth training camp up in Camelot, get those young footballers in and try and train up some good generals. Yeah, that's right, Stink Ogre, probably. Um, do you follow Champions League? No. For someone who makes a lot of streams themed about football, I'm actually surprisingly uh, not a follower of football, really. <laughs> at all. I, I follow it now and again. Might watch a final or something. Tell you what though, Aberdeen are going into a final. Aberdeen are going to be in a Scottish Cup final against Rangers. Massive. Anyway, we've got a guy in the chat called Real Bjornia fan. What the hell? I don't remember. You're, you're a six month sub. I don't ever remember you. I think you might have changed your name. We're doing Holy Bjornia or Back to England. The goal of this campaign will be to return to England. I will now... Okay, the dual monarchy owns England. It's dominated by the Anglois people who are a mix of French and English. They're in southern England and northern France. England doesn't exist as a nation, although there's still a lot of English people there across the whole place. Bjornia is a nation down here in South America. Modern-day Argentina, which consists of English evacuees, settlers, you know, refugees, whatever you may call them. There is absolutely no plausible way that this might have happened in real life. I think it's probably a ridiculous concept, but Bjornia is one of the most possibly one of the most iconic nations and situations in DoD, and rightly so. It's amazing. So yeah, Bjornia was added when DoD started ages ago. The DoD fan fork version here is a, a different branch which has added different sort of lore and stuff and Bionia will have its own event chain and you know choices and lore that have been unique to that are unique to this particular DOD fan fork and we're going to experience it for the first time while I've been playing in other campaigns like Aragon, Plantaginia, DLC we've noticed a lot of things happening with Bionia so we've been checking them out from a distance war with Tawant and Suyu oh, aka God. the Incas is inevitable these, these definitely happen. Does Bionia get Falcon, Falklands? I think I've got a core on it. Yeah, but Scandinavia owns it. Thanks for the 70 bits, uh, Taco Man. So this is like an absolute monarchy, LARPing, old-fashioned, Christian, royalist, loyalist 
English faction who have created a nation down here. We've spread out, we've moved into the interior from Camelot, which is our capital, uh, and such amazing Old English LARP names. Apart from Providence, that's not Old English at all, that's a fucking Latin word, get it out of there. But, uh, and we also share this nation with a quarter of the pops being various uh, Native American tribes, Het, Suri, Mapuche and Kola. So that wasn't even in your regular DoD. Those are expanded and uh, more detailed Native Americans now, which is nice. Can you keep absolute monarchy or do you have to liberalise? Well, I don't know. We're going to see about that. I don't think it's ever going to be a possibility to get immigrants while this absolute monarchy. But who knows? We'll see what happens. So welcome to Beornia, everyone. I'm finally playing it. This campaign has been promised and hyped for a while. Great to have you all here. Look forward to getting that sub count back up and getting back on the grind. And going off on random tangents all the time, based on random people in chat. All the time. Right. Let's get that national focus. What have we got here in terms of administrative? Let's get it up in the capital region a little bit. We start with 400k pops. Not great. The Incas have 1.23 million. Maybe we can. Kitavi. Two Hussars. Let's split it off into two stacks and uh, create two full stacks. Getting industry as this country? Jesus, I don't think that's possible. Uh, maybe a bit of polar light artillery. Tech, what have we got? Tech is standard. We've actually got one military tech, which is a very nice boost, I think. That will give us the... I mean, it sounds small, but it might give us a tiny edge. I want to see you has four. Also, we start allied to Lotharingia, which is nice. If we maintain that alliance, we can maybe get help against Taiwan and Suyu. For vanilla DOD, Bionia starts to take Nigeria and use militancy from that. Well, yeah, it would make sense to expand into colonizing as Bionia. That would be an optimal path to do. I might do it. But the first sec I'll probably get, we, we start with military industrial complex, so medicine. And then Ideological Thought actually drops in 1840 in this mod. I would get Ideological Thought first, normally. Because it gives massive uh, research points boosts from the, the plurality. Vic2 lads on tour. But yeah, if you subscribe, you will trigger the Come On England alert. And you will get access to the North RC emote in the chat. Can we get some subs dropping the North RC emote in the chat to show off what people are missing? What places spawn the best footballers? Well, all of this region here. Africa. The, the descendants of Africans who move to European countries produce great footballers, right? So we will try and encourage that, yeah? Start with a couple of transports. Um, I might try and maintain them later in order to use that for potential colonization, but off the bat, nah. Now, let's spawn our opening event. See the lore. The English monarchy. Oh. Okay, right. Okay. Day two outbreak of tuberculosis. Day two outbreak of tuberculosis, everyone. What are the actual fucking chances of that? Um. I'm on the 2nd of January. I'm restarting, okay? I'm, I'm fucking... We're safe scumming it. Come on, we were on day two. We were on day two. I'm not doing that. Um, forget that everything that happened just happened. I'm restarting. Oh my god, Taco Man, yes. You can cope underscore unfortunately gifted a tier one sub. He is oh no, it's unfortunately gifting subs. Thank you so much, Takaman, for the five. I appreciate it. Give everyone the North FC. Spread the North FC around. You can cope underscore unfortunately gifted a tier one I'm doing all my starting moves valley. as they were again. Tuberculosis FC. All right. There was, an, there was an outbreak of tuberculosis amongst the England squad and the game has been postponed. 
What about industry though? Fuck, uh... RGOs? Oh no. Gifted a tier one sub to AIM 159. Mate, this is not a country. We've got nothing. We've got fucking cows and goats, sheep, and Cadco some grain. Underscore unfortunately gifted a tier one sub to him Lekum Leko four. Oh, this is bad. Ah, uh, this is bad. Well, I I'm not saying we won't get potentially maybe RGO decisions later. I don't know, but this is so bad that I'm just gonna make a steel factory anyway. Can I not afford it? No, I can't afford it. We'll make money in a bit. Uh, are we at the point where we can unpause? Yeah, I think I've done everything I needed to do. I, would, I don't know, another alliance, but yeah. Okay, yeah, no tuberculosis this time, crazy. Uh, <laughs> it's literally vanilla Vic to Argentina. I know, I'm not saying I expected anything, but it doesn't mean that it doesn't hurt to see that, okay? In terms of RGOs, we've got no RGOs. The English Monarchy in Exile. Bjornia is by all metrics the youngest nation in America. Even if technically independent earlier than Amazonia, this land was only settled by English settlers from the Lotharingian colony during the uh, 17th century. Crossing the Odin River and destroying the short-lived settlement of Argentina. They destroyed Argentina in the 1600s. Yes! Fucking get them, lads. We prevented that one. We nipped that in the bud. We did not let Argentina happen. Fucking gr great. Let's go. Can we get a North? Can we get a North FC in the chat for that? We did. We went back in time. The whole DOD lore is an English person going back in time and preventing Argentina from existing. But there was a butterfly effect. They accidentally stood on a butterfly in fucking. Gavla, Sweden, which caused Swede Scandinavia to own the Falklands. He fucked up. Uh, but we, at least we didn't get Argentina. North FC won their first match. Yes. North FC 11, Argentina 0 in 1607. And that was it. But, uh... Lotharingian. So this was like part of a Lotharingian colony or something back in the day. They developed a peculiar mindset of exiles, distrustful of foreigners and keen to protect the language and culture. From that chaos emerged strong landowners that rule over the lands like feudal lords. One of them, Harold Cavendish, proclaimed himself King of the House of England in 1822. That's recent. Now his son Edward rules and the path of possibles is open for the young European educated king who must choose between the traditional mindset of the cattle barons and the new ideas he learnt and practised in Prague and have become shared in the cities of the coast. So that's the political divide there. We've got reactionary landowners, the cattle barons, fucking cow lords. Bjorgsit means Bjorgsit. Surely the Scandinavians would come to an agreement and not fight a costly war over the pointless islands. Someone did not watch my Republic of Africa, New Africa playthrough, uh, and the Caribbean Wars. But, uh, what's this going to do? That did nothing. We get nothing out of the first event. Am I making money? No. What's this fear situation? Neutral all round. No one, no one going to fear me. We get a little bit of a birth rate boost though. Right, what's better than Bjornia? Almost any country in the game. Maybe, technically speaking. It's it's not a good country in terms of the setup and things it has. But I believe we can make a miracle happen here. Look, there's our first miracle in Providence, no less. We get an artillery piece actually building from the world market. That's a miracle. That is... Uh, should we go reactionary or modernizing? I'm not giving to one to see you mill access. What do you think? Do you think modernizing might lead us to get immigration and become more technologically advanced? What do you think? I feel like for all my playthroughs I've always gone with the most hardline option. I might like liberalize and stuff in this. I don't know. Yeah, modernizing 
Sounds about right, especially when we're considering we are a new world nation and we might be able to get immigrants out of it. Because there's no chance of getting immigrants as an absolute monarchy. This is good. This is good. Some money. Let's not fund the army right now. We absolutely do not need to do that. Try and make money. I just built an artillery piece. That is a miracle. Unless you're going to throw yourself into the DM immediately, probably liberalise. It's going to be a long, hard road, coming home. No one said coming home would be easy. It's not going to be easy. We might be looking at having to build a cavalry army, by the way. If we're unable to build more artillery. Okay, here we go. Oh my god, I remember this. I remember this from the same journalist who visited Plantaginia. That's great. This guy... Um, oh god. A city of poverty is the best way to uh, explain Camelot. Even as I sailed up to the city, the stench of rotting meat was already hitting my very senses before the docks were even within calling distance. Even afar, the city warned me of its very red-blooded nature with the waving of red cloth amongst all corners of its shores. That's them waving the English England flag. The people were almost asymptomatic to the very disgusting fabric of their capital. They lacked any wealth upon their character, and yet they wandered with smiles in the most in This is quite literally Caesar describing the ancient Britons, isn't it? So, the indignant and ignorant babes to their world of deserted wealth, and even for their city- This is just perfectly describing North FC people. Just imagine North FC people when you read this. And even for their city livers, they spat and shushed among the barons of the interior, who wore their poverty cloaks of red with pride, like they were the finest Venetian jewellery, and acted like the most prestigious of men in the estates. I shall not bear this land any longer than I need to. Extract from the account of Yu Shanxi, an Onvers journalist. Does he shit on every nation? He shat on Plantaginia, and he just shat on Bionia. If I were to play any nation in the Americas, would he uh, shit on it too? Maybe I should get it spoiled. Maybe we should just find out by playing them. Deport him. Uh, yeah, we deported him. Don't worry. Uh, there you go. Trying desperately to turn around the money situation. Make a bit of money. You know, we're... Like... Middle class is not getting their needs because we have a lack of goods, probably. I think what I'll do is delete the frigate, and if we are going to have ships, we will focus on just having transports. Um, so we can maybe go and colonise Africa. Remember how that turned out to be a disaster when we did it as fucking the slave revolt for Plantaginia as well, though? Remember how that was just terrible and we lost? Like they literally revolted against me. Maybe I don't want to repeat that. Maybe I don't want to repeat that. Did anyone on Discord mention how I started streaming on YouTube and go, huh? What? What? What happened? Did anyone note it there? I never saw any comments. Let me check the community post. Why am I on speed two? Look, I like to play slowly, uh, and I like to take my time. But I get it. Speed 2 was a bit slow at the moment. I get it. Let's do Speed 3. Now, no one mentions it on the community post. No one's talking about me going live on YouTube. We swept it under the rug. No one noticed. It's fine. I think everyone in Bjornia is Bjornian. What? No. We've got native people as well. Isn't there a weird path if you get annexed in the first war then Lotharingia wins? Um, I remember that happening in my other playthrough. Something happened there. I think... Uh... No, yeah, there is a weird path. There's anglo Lotharing people here. Thank you very much, Daniel, for the prime. Appreciate it. 
Yeah, so as it said, Lotharingia was like a Loth... No, Beornia was a Lotharingian sort of colony. So in southern Lotharingia, that's where there were English settlers. Oh my god, did we get cholera? Quarantine the province. I mean, I guess every country gets some disease at some point in the early game. Just have to live with it. I'm not going to rehost for that one, okay? It's fine. You become Knights of the Cross. You, no, yeah, I remember. I wouldn't be able to play that myself. I think what I think it might be better to play Lotharingia for that stuff. Or maybe Atlantia. But yeah, if Bionia gets annexed, we do become a sort of... I don't know. A secret society within Lotharingia or something. And then I think if Lotharingia beats to Ant and Sue you later, they can form a sort of Bjornian puppet. Which is ruled by them. And it's sort of ruled by the Anglo Lotharingian Lotharian people. It's, it's some good good stuff, complicated. Hello Jackie the cat, it's me. Thank you very much, Salvage, for the prime. Get your primes in. Let's get a hype train going. Let's get coming home. So, Washkar Inca has won within Tawantan Suyu. Is this DOD fan fork? Absolutely. It is. Let's see if we can figure out from the event text here if this Washka is going to be good or bad for us. So, ever since Sapa Inca's death, battles have been fought across Tawantan Suyu by those who supported Prince Washkar and those who supported Prince Lapa. And by the way, I, just, I will just interject here. That South America is traditionally seen throughout everything as the, like the least relevant continent. Not saying it is or should be, but it, it never got any love in Vanilla Vic 2 and it's often overlooked. Also, I need to fucking change the clergyman. Not capitalist, clergyman. Um, but it seems like in DoD Fanfork, South America is actually where all the shit goes down in the early game. You know, the Incas are rising, there's a Bjornian war, which is going to happen. Washkar is good since you will get a better mob size bonus. Well, I'm glad that Washkar Inca is going to give me a nice modifier. Thank you. Um, a winner has emerged, Prince Washkar. Washkar's strategic cunning guided his faction to victory. Much of the aristocracy. The conflicts have been less intense. Many hope that his bold vision will bring to want and see you the vengeance which shall heal its wounds and sorrow. Well, that sounds like it might be aimed at me. Yeah. Yeah, bring it on. Okay. We're not getting any goods to build. We can build one light artillery. I'm going to bite the bullet, quite literally, and go, out, go out, all out on cavalry. It's the only way we're going to get an army. We just need horses and grain. 20 years of independence! Oh, this is going to be where the uh, everything begins. Have I considered playing Emi on Taxes? No, not really. Sounds like a great mod that makes EU4 better, but I'm, I'm not, not really interested. Right, so. Bjornia was recognised as a separate entity in 1817 by the Charlemagne Agreement that saw the colonial governor of Lotharingia agreeing to name the cattle baron Harold Cavendish lieutenant governor of the current colony of southern Lotharingia. Is light artillery that much worse? No. While Bjornia was only recognised independent in 1822 by the Lotharingian revolutionaries, it was the first act that split the lands across the Odin and Bernicia from the rest of the colony. So we were we used to be part of Lotharingia. Which European country did Lotharingia itself used to be? Were they Burgundy? Yeah, they must have been Burgundy. And then Burgundy lost control of the colony. So the Lotharingian revolutionaries then recognised Bjornian independence separately. Right. Who is real Bjornia? A. Hey, no, it's not Zenmos. Who is it? Account created 3rd of November 2020. Who are you? Who bloody well are you? Well, I must get to the bottom of that. Um, guess? Damn. Who? It's hard to remember loads of different names and stuff. And I'm sure you're probably someone who's been active. But 
Let's use a six month sub. Uh, Zenmo, it's not Zenmos because he's already here and he has the artist badge because he's the artist. Nothing yet, Burgundy. But also Anglos moved there because Amazonia was run by Anglois and French planters. Yeah, even seven months sub. Who could you be? Who's been active on these streams lately? It likes to ship post maybe. Thank you, Monday, for the tier one sub at ten months. I appreciate it. Best spud remembering subs. I feel like I forget too many people. Is it Ladoge? No, no, no. He would be a mod. He would still be a mod, even though he changed his name. Ladoge is also here earlier. Who is this man? Or woman, sorry. But yeah, I remember many subs. It's very hard to remember a lot of different names and stuff. But I like to think that I have a good understanding and remember people. Uh, and, and so many people come and go over the years as well. Yeah, Ladoge is still here. He's sitting there calmly, just enjoying the stream, sipping a drink. And he thinks that people are impersonating him. And why would Ladoge care so much about Leone anyway? He's French. Who is real Bjorn a fan? Is there a way to look at someone's history? Um, you've got 70... You've got 793 messages on my channel. I'm scrolling back through them. I'm going to find you. I'm going to find you. Fuck, you've got, you've got messages in previous streams, but your name still says real Bjorn a fan through all of them. I can see your message history in the PLC game. Uh Ooh, you so you're Polish. You're fucking Polish. Unless you just yeah. I'm looking at your message history in the Poland campaign. You're you're LARPing as a pole there. Are you Polish or do you just sort of follow the weather wherever it goes? How do I close this message window? Ate the French. Ate the French. Thank you very much, and Bimios. Very much for the two months. I can't close this. Wait, wait, wait. There we go. Who is this guy? Damn. That slipped my mind. Forget it. If you won't admit who he is, then I'll never figure it out. So, what's happening here? Did I read all this? Edward, who is my current king, who recalls these events as the reason for being sent away to the wonders of Europe. It seems that date was of special interest, for he took occasion to summon the rump parliament in Camelot in two weeks for an important occasion. So, this could be the point where we branch off, either liberalise or stay absolute. Um, I wonder what we will do. And I'm out of money. You can check on Discord if you need to at general. Well, uh, oh god. Oh! Oh, this is it. We have such a huge choice to start with here. When, Ar when Harold crowned himself King of Bionia in 1822, he decided to create a parliament based on the English parliament of old. But he never meant for the commons and lords to have an but an advisory role, and he seldom summoned sessions. His son has seen much throughout Europe, in his years of study, studied the constitutions and seeing ways of ruling. Edward has big plans for his country and has wondered for years how to realise them. Autocracy has its advantages and will placate the will of his uncle and the cattle barons, but perhaps it is time the Bionian parliament becomes a true political power on the Scandinavian and Burgundian model. Interesting. We can maintain all of these reforms and stay as an absolute monarchy. The parliament is confirmed as a political power. The king's governments will not answer to parliament. So there's two different levels of, you know, we've got a parliamentary monarchy and a constitutional monarchy. Okay, Yingezin is explaining the whole thing to me. I mean, 
Liberal Bionia will get crazy immigration, but no one will settle in the Andes. There will be no coal, no metal, so you'll need to conquer Atacama for sulfur and probably never go burnt. So why is it instead you can chill as a Burgundian's feeling and swimming money? Um, how would I get coal and iron by staying auto autocratic? And what do you mean by settling in the Andes? I'm going for the liberal thing here, though. This becomes already weighted universal when we get past, past the post. All unions illegal. This one gives same state press only. Allowed. I think we're going to go all the way to liberal Bjornia. I mean, look. This is what English football is all about. Um, you know. English football is all about uh, modernising and being liberal. So, you know, kneeling and all that. BLM, we'll go all the way. We'll do it. It's football accurate to go this way. All right, let's do it. Parliamentary monarchy. Boom, we've got massive re uh, reforms, but we're still a monarchy and I still might be able to change my party, you know. Um, great stuff. And already, we're starting to get a trickle of immigration in everyone. That is brilliant. Oh. Yingezen said in the chat that I would get crazy immigration. We're already approaching being number one immigration. We're skyrocketing up to 700. Look at that. Can we even beat the other powers? Maybe not. When does the next episode come to YouTube? Next Friday. I apologise, but I uh, cannot make it this Friday. Due to the fact that I just did take a long break from everything. But I, I did, you know, I've made it so that we get two weeks for the videos. I would much rather make it two weeks instead of releasing videos early and then waiting longer and all that. It's the best way to do it. Let's build some cavalry. It's the best thing we'll get for now. Oh, we're starting to get unemployment. Well, money is... We're starting to make a little bit of money, so I'm able to make a factory. We need time to recover. What, in the game, or...? The economy was turned around by this new regime. Great. But it, we even still have service by requirement, which is not good for immigration. Or, or education. But the plus six mobilization size, which... Well, to be fair, that even doesn't matter when we only have three. Uh, but, uh... Maybe we can increase that. Do not auto-create leaders. Let me make a general at the earliest possible convenience. We do indeed love Bionia. Oh my god, what is that pop growth? The pop growth is huge. We are up there in immigration. We're the second highest. No one else like Australia or anything, so it's just in South America. Amazonia is skyrocketing, but this is very good. I mean, growing the pops this much in the early game... I don't know. I mean, I don't think it could get better than this. The autocratic route. Seems like it'll be, it would be tough to argue for the autocratic route for any reasons other than LARP. Because, as a new world nation, this is just the most optimal. Nothing can beat it. It's great. Just seeing the pops flow in. It's coming home. It's coming home. The industry is not coming home yet. Do we have a capitalist trying to build bronze? Okay, build bronze. We do need bronze. I don't know if we'll be able to import the goods needed to make bronze, but make a bronze factory anyway, that's fine. Make the bronze age. Are you going for England or to try to stay in South America? But of course we're going back. Oh my god, of course we're going back to England. We're going back. We're coming home. We're going to come home. 
We're going to unite with Northumbria. Hopefully the DM doesn't do well this playthrough. Hopefully this is one of the ones where they release Northumbria, as we've seen before. It's got to be one of those. It's going to come home. But first things first, we're going to have a war with the Incas by events. We know it's going to happen. It's pretty impossible not to know that this happens when every time we play a different campaign as a different country, we literally constantly see the events for this war happening and we see the war happen and we spectate it. Can we change Argentina to Bjornia? Oh shit, that is a... As soon as I read that, Actually, I think I might do that. I think I might change the Argentina channel on Discord to Bjornia. That is actually a brilliant idea. Wait, what's this? Change your name? Is this a generic event? To do with immigration? Well, we, we'll get plurality then, I guess. I mean, holy shit, that is a great suggestion. It makes a lot of sense. Because my streams, and possibly the Bavaria series, I'm not saying that this has any relation to the Bavaria series, but everything is leading towards a Bjornia theme. And Bjornia is in modern-day Argentina. There's the possibility of Incas and Bjornia negotiate and don't have a war. Well, that would, that would be boring. That would be boring. The, the, uh, the Twitch automatic moderator just censored the word fucks from Incalim there. And watch your fucking language. Watch, watch your fucking language, mate! Whoa, come on, England! One step closer to Brazil. It used to be Brazil, but we move on, we adapt, we change. I'm not going to change the channel immediately, but I'm going to start moving towards it later on the Discord. I might even make a poll or something. Any of the regular Discord uh, users in the chat got an opinion on changing the Argentina channel to Bjornia? Francis Ragland? Kurva is censored as well. Yeah, you would know, because you're Polish, whoever you are, you'll be on your fan. You are. I know you are. You're literally Scottish. How are you so bad at an English accent? Because I didn't specify which English accent I was going to do. That was the problem. I just sort of went generic. You should speak Scots. Ah, uh, I'm not in a mood for doing lots of impersonations and different accents on the stream. I don't think I'd do them well. I'm not quite in the mood. It normally does require a little bit of drink to be in the mood for that as well. As an RG, you have my blessing. Well, I'm sure... Any Argentina wouldn't like the fact that the uh, the spam and NSFW channel on my Discord is named after them. 100 viewers? I remember when we ate 100 viewers for breakfast. And now it's a great achievement. We have fallen. Moving from multiplayer streams to single player streams has uh, lowered everyone's expectations of what constitutes a good viewership around here. No, but seriously, I appreciate everyone turning up and watching. Great to have you all. What's this? We can give the poor strata one militancy, which is probably better pop by pop to get militancy up, but we're not. Militancy is not increasing. Militancy up would be good for getting reforms, so we need to we need to move towards that. Now, the thing I'm not sure about is uh, on this government type. If I changed my party to say reactionary, what would be the consequences? Would I get a bad modifier? Does anyone know specifically? Oh, 1,500. 1,500 immigration. We are now at the highest immigration. We went up... Well, briefly we went up above Amazonia, but they're back. But we're up there, you know? We're up there. And we're already up to 20k pops more than we started the game with, you know? You cannot state how important this is.
That's true to an extent in Kalim, but the main thing, the main thing about it is that my content has always been multiplayer. My YouTube content's multiplayer content, so people want and expect and like multiplayer content particularly. Can we pan down to the last Malvinus? Well, what are they called? They're called Tapped U. And they are, in fact... Hey, there are Bionians that live on it. But uh, we're, we will be taking this at some point. I've actually been told on the DoD Fanfuck Discord that you actually do need to take these. Because there are some things later that require you to have all your cores. By the way, I forgot to look at this. I forgot to look at decisions. So we can try to go north into... Mapuche lands, or is this south? It's south, down here, Patagonia. Mapuche, which is down here. I need to be a great power, state and government, 1870, or La Cagunia has an owner, which is this here. Maybe the Incas take that. Oh god, we got a fucking viewer bot shit in chat asking me to go to streamrise.ru. Yeah, I'll definitely go there, mate. I wouldn't even go there behind fucking five VPNs. Nice try, Zyko. And it, it mods. The mods on the channel are too complacent because they never have to deal with anything. But look, we just got a scam spammer shit. And it's still there. Zyko, Ladoge, come on. You can't let this go. Do you know how many viewers that I have lost now because they've gone to streamrise.ru and they've been completely hacked and destroyed? Thank you, Ladoge. Zyko, you dropped the ball on that. Zyko was spending his time trying to get me with Sugondis instead of banning the obvious scam, spam... Thank you, ma'am, in the chat. Come on. We're better than this. It's not my fault, uh, Skits Oppenhauer. You have to sue Zyko, personally. It's his fault. Look, he just accepted full responsibility. Legally, it's his fault. What was that shit actually offering me? It was offering me fucking viewer bots, which I condemn, and I would never... I would never use that. Um... And Taco Man was here as well. Sorry, Taco Man, you can't cope, unfortunately. You shouldn't have just sent a message right now because you just exposed yourself as having been responsible for that bot getting through. Hey, how are you also four months well? Thank you, Chad Todd, very much for the four months. You're saying, hey, how are you, comma, also four months well. You're not, you're not saying, how are you also four months? Wow. You need to up your comma game. Thank you very much, Chad. I've said it before, and I've pointed it out many times. My first ever Patreon supporter is called Chad, and he's still a Patreon supporter. So, you know, that says a lot. Um, speaking of the full FNAF movie, I've seen the full FNAF movie posted on Discord so much, and every time it's been on a server that I've had responsibility over, it has been deleted, of course, because we do not condone piracy. But people have fucking posted that, mate. I've seen it. I mean, I haven't seen it. Like, I, I didn't watch it. But I've seen it being posted, is what I'm saying. And I haven't gone to see the film, because I was never into fucking Five Nights at Freddy's. Wait, you have a Patreon? How could you not know? Um, which region? Godwinson region? There's fucking nothing we can make here. Just, we'll make it canned food. Because grain and cows, just grain, I don't know. Um, I thought it was some other payment site. Well, here's the thing, here's the thing. I've got a Patreon, which is like a separate thing. You get bonus YouTube content on that, including a bonus clips compilation I released for the Bavaria series only a week ago or so. So you can go and support for that. Um, I sub on Patreon as well. Are you already a Patreon as well? Damn. How can we ever figure out who you are? Thank you once again for the content, Mr. Spud. Spud Thank you, Baron. North FC. Thank you so much for the three months. Yingizen has a fucking essay. It's beautiful. Thank you. 
what is going on. But um, what was I saying? I, was I making a point or something? I forgot. I think I was able to build artillery, by the way. I just built artillery. But uh, glad you are at two. I'm just going to go for two percent. To be honest, and we're already there. On this. Oh yeah, yeah. I have a Patreon, so you can support me on Patreon. You get some packs, including the role in Discord. If you want to drop a one-time quick donation on stream, then you can use the stream elements tip link, which is right here. You can use that for your text-to-speech message now. Patreon is like a monthly thing where you also get bonus uh, YouTube content. The stream elements thing is for your one-off text-to-speech on Twitch streams. And of course, you also have, when I'm streaming on YouTube, Iron and Glory and Beyond. I thought that was a tease. I thought I was going to get an Iron RGO. Damn. We actually get uh, Officer Training Leadership Modify, which is good. But yeah, when I stream on YouTube, you get uh, super chats, which are your, you know, text speech. South Anglia is wool. Can we make a wool fabric factory? Hmm. They had that in this mod, right? They had wool fabric factories, didn't they? They have to invent them. But uh, since I can't do that, I'm just going to make an artillery factory because there's nothing else to do. Since we have no good RGOs anywhere, I might as well just make the factories and hope for the best. Oh yeah, and a cement factory, never forget that, because you might end up with a shortage later. And would it be a tech that you get that in? Um, getting the railroad tech would be very good. It even has pop growth, I might get that next. Considering we have the... Uh, we definitely have... Military industrial complex, experimental railroad would be a great next tech. And then that would lead us into ideological thought after that. Oh right, yeah, good stuff, good stuff. Mate, I just built artillery. We have to delete some cavalry, make some. And I'm going to make pure artillery right now. Some men because be out of sync. I can put mobilized troops into that and make mobilized stacks. Thank you, Moldovan devil. For two pounds. Bring it home. Multsum esque. Thank you very much for the tip. Let's uh, continue. Hundred viewers for Bionia, and you're one of them. I've got hundred and one viewers, real Bionia fan, and you're the hundred and first. Okay. Saxbra, yep. Saxbra. The fact that I just thought of that shows the brain rot that you get on the internet and all that perfectly. Maybe work on a second doodle. Your secret doodle, don't uh, don't talk about the secret doodle, Zenmo, but if you've got any new doodles specific for this stream, then that would be great. But there's a secret doodle that uh, must be kept secret until the time is right. We got a new doodle from Zenro. What is it? No Engerland? Oh, okay. Let's, let's put this one in then. A new uh, Zenro doodle has dropped. There will be Engerland though. Wait, let me just save this. Hold on, hold on. I should pause the game while I get the doodle. It takes time, you know, to download. Hold on, hold on. This is what we've got. I should take the Spud version of that only and make it a, a Discord emote. Definitely. Thank you. Um... I've got such a great amount of Discord emote slots now because we got that boost lately. Zenmo, by the way, is our resident artist. He produces great stuff like that constantly. He's got the artist role that you can get on Twitch. Bionia players when they learn about the release nation and fate play as? What? Are you saying I should play as Avateta? 
Or are you uh, you're making a reference to how Bionia players can just go on the dual monarchy and form England instead, right? Glad to hear it, Pico man. Enjoy that, mate. Rolling a new general, he's shite. Martin Dundas. Fucking shite. Verdict, shite. Let's fund the bronze factory in Avalon. If, oh, could it, are we actually making factories? No, we don't have machine parts. Or cement, even. Shit. We really need to just grow and improve and upgrade my world ranking so that I can get more goods on the world market. That's basically what I have to do. Am I getting feared by anyone? Nope. Not happening. I don't know what it would be in Kalim, but... I know for a fact that in this mod, Southern England is more... Thank you, Bjornian and Proud. I agree. It sounded like the average football chant in uh, uh, Manchester United. I don't know. It was beautiful. Money for Bionia propaganda. Was that Welsh? Uh, that, was, that was specific, uh, suspiciously Welsh there, mate. I don't know. Nah. There will be no level 21 clothing factory, Sneaky. Not happening this time, because I'm not putting my industry in the hands of random, shitty, useless capitalists. Uh, let's make gunpowder here. We'll put sulfur into it eventually when we ever get sulfur. This may sound weird, but I always wonder if it would be a good idea to create a country path where you're actually required to lose wars and land to follow down said interesting path. Well, there might be some things like that in DoD Fan Fork. There might be. I can't recall any off the top of my head, but... I mean, Poland, Lithuania, though. Think about the Poland-Lithuania campaign. You watched that one, right? In DoD Fan Fork. Not the uh, critically acclaimed PLC series. Which you can also watch. That was multiplayer, you know, mainline multiplayer DoD chill server. But the PLC uh, DoD Fan Fork campaign recently. Um, I don't know if we exactly lost any wars, but we lost a lot. In terms of random, like, really bad events that fucked us and we lost land. So, it's not quite what you're saying, but in a sense it was good that it had a bit of real challenge to it. You had to lose a bit to then gain some more later. Oh yes, Chad Todd, I've heard of that. What's this? Is this uh, more prestige event? That's good. The prestige events are very good. We get uh, world ranking. More chance of getting goods. But yes, Chad, I've actually heard mention of that one as well on the DoD FanFog Discord. If you lose a war as a Sardom of Rus, yeah, if you lose some alliance to the Commonwealth, you could become a theocracy and go on a crusade. Yeah, I've heard of that. Maybe we should do that sometime. Why is there Riviere d'Argent and not River of Bionia? Where's that? What are you talking about? So, Odonia, and, yeah, what's this? Odonia here might be the uh, Anglo-Lotharin sort of colony. Maybe we can take that later and get some events. La Plata River Entry Sea Tile. Uh, New Kent, Montaron. Which one's the La Plata River? this what would it be called oh you mean this oh Riviera Dash oh yeah 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 the sea tile well there that's actually very wrong yeah 
River of Gold. No, that's silver. River of Siv Silver. Oh. Oh! English Red. We get Die! We get Die! Come on, England! Die some fucking clothes! The Bjornians are a thick with red, from flags they bear to their clothes to the very essence of their being. If you ever thought the Vatican had their fair play of the die, then I'd say the Bjornians got the whole pot. Ah! Co Cochineal red has been our mainstay colour ever since James Cochineal, ever since James Oakes looted the insects and dye from the Incan outpost back in the 17th century. We stole it from the Incas! Come on, eh? Steal some fucking dye from the Incas. It's ours, isn't it? We fucking invented it, isn't it? Yeah, we fucking invented it. Fucking ours, mate. What are you on about? The Incas never had that. It's fucking ours, mate. Um, it's been the economic life for many smaller sedentary families in the west of the country. Bright colour, waving in every street of our cities, towns, and villages. This reminds me of like traditional Inca dyes and clothing and things. The Bionians have just adopted it. They've stolen it. But it's ours. It's definitely ours. Better red than dead. Cuthred becomes dye, which could open up... Uh, which province is that? Down here? Hmm. South Anglia. Well, you know, that means... Definitely means... No one did answer, though. Do Is there... Is there a wool fabric factory where you can make fabric out of uh, wool instead of cotton. Wool from the RGO, the sheep. Maybe I could look for it. Plurality, good. Um, does it exist? Where would it be? Uh, machine parts factory is in there. Yeah, no, 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 that's it. That's it. Allows wool factories. It's in interchangeable parts. That's it. So we would definitely be able to make some good clothing industry in this country. That would make a lot of money. We can get a full supply chain. Because there's definitely wool and now we have dyes. So that's perfect. That'd be good. What's your offer, Sneaky? What are you talking about? What would be some good examples of quality Bjornian gastronomy? Bangers and mash, fish and chips. Now there'd be no shortage of fish down here on the coast to get chip shops everywhere. You know, Yorkshire pudding. There's a small marsupial called the Monito del Monte in southwestern South America. Rename it the Hill Bloke and you're good to go. The Hill Bloke. Wow. Let's see if we can look up that animal. Monito del Monte. It's that. That literally means Hill Bloke sort of thing, right? Here. Uh. This is it. Hill monkey. Oh. Hard block. That is... Is there anything to scale it? Oh my god, there's there's a picture of it with someone's thumb. That's how small it is. Fucking... Oh, look at that one in the hand. Tiny little thing. But what does monito mean? Like, monito... Does it mean monkey? Or does it mean man? Little man. Bloke. So these animals here, discovered by the Bjornians, they are the hill bloke. That's them. Ah, they're so tiny. Did you say it was a marsupial? So, is, does that mean it's not a rodent? It's not like a rat or a guinea pig? Isn't the marsupial the ones that, like... It is. It is a rodent. Mono equals monkey. Mon monito equals little monkey. Ah. 
As a Moldovan, you would uh, be fluent in Spanish. Royal Hillbrook. We would call them Hillbrooks. A marsupial. But then that's different from a rodent, right? So these things put their babies in their pouches like kangaroos. Is that what a marsupial means? So is this a new mod or it's DOD fanfuck? We've done it many, many times. What would capybaras be called in Bjornian? Well, capybara's name comes from Inca. And then, I mean, in Spanish, they just copied the, what the Incas called them. Or no, maybe it wasn't Inca or Quechua or whatever. I might get that wrong. But let's just say it might have been Guarani, whatever language that they were taken from into Spanish and Portuguese. Hulibaras. No. Uh, Flat capybaras. <laughs> Coconut blokes. Uh, Chippy baras. Booty baras. Here you go. Here's the chippy baras, footy baras. There you go. Capy bazas. Capy bionias, bionia. Mm -mm. Cape Bazas. Yeah. Anyway. Now that we're... You know what? The DoD fanfuck people should make an event. Or something. About those animals. Or, ca or capybaras down here. And the Bionians name them. Take them as pets. Hunt them. And when we reconquer England, we're going to take some of the animals with us and make them populate England. We're going to have capybaras populating England. Somehow, even though the climate, they can't really live in the climate. Um, three attack general, Robert Cranston. Great, great, great grandfather of Brian Cranston. Three attack, morale minus, but organisation and experience. There's our best general. And that's actually quite a good DoD fanfork general role as well, because we've, we've had some real shiters in the past, but that's a good one. Oh, Avalon already has 8.4% soldiers, and that one has 10. Okay, that's not good, because we want more. Five there. We can't really encourage soldiers, because we have, like, over five everywhere. Exterminate French and re repopulate it with capybaras? Yeah. Um, and I still haven't looked at all the events, by the way. Decisions, I mean. We can get some prestige there. That's good. Increase world ranking. So we can make the new Camelot, which would increase life rating by five and give us more prestige. So that requires regenerative pharmacies. Which one's that? Tier two industrial tech there. Um, regenerative pharmacies is not a good... Fucking, I'm speaking like Joe Biden here, jeez. Regenerative... Reg regenerative... Furnaces. Regenerative furnaces is not a good tech to go for for me because I don't have any coal or iron to upgrade in the first place to get to that. So I might bypass, I might miss out on that for now. The next tech I'm getting would be ideological thought. Oh damn, life rating, I don't think I've ever seen that on a button. An example of a life rating event that's probably in the game is like the upgrading Venice decisions. Um, if you're curious, the papacy declared capybaras to be fish so that South American Catholics could have something that's abundant in the region to eat. If capybaras are fish, does that mean Bionians eat capybaras and chips? Fucking hell, mate. This, this it just keeps getting deeper and deeper. Wow. 
But these Beordians wouldn't be Catholics, so this whole conundrum wouldn't happen in the first place. Plus, we have plenty of actual fish off this big coast we have to get fish for fish and chips. The fact that capes didn't go extinct like dodos is astounding to me. Well, capybaras are actually really unendangered. They're really good. Like, there's no threat of extinction for them. They are just evolutionary, evolutionarily very good. These people are Protestant. We don't be Anglican, yeah. Oh well, I suppose I can tell you what they are in the actual pomp. The pops, yeah, Protestant, of course. We're getting some Orthodox Bulgarian immigration, but they'll move to the right church uh, soon. And we have got Inti and Animus natives, but they won't be a problem. Any other religions coming in? We're getting Catholic Hungarians coming in. We've got fucking Edward Habsburg over here. Uniate North Russians. What the fuck is that? Uh, no idea. We're getting... Islamic, North Caucasians and Albanians coming in, and Georgians. Sunni Georgians, wait a minute. What? The Georgians converted to Islam. Did they? Too bad you can't really see the religion out here. The Georgian, Sunni, Sunni uh, Georgians. We should add the cooking tab to the stream? No. no. But I'll tell you, Gordon Ramsay will be a Bjornian one day. got a lot of Catholics coming in, Italians, Irish, we're getting Irish immigrants down to Bionia, some things never change. Croatian Catholics, Ongwa, which might be controversial. I thought Ongwa people, like the whole point of this country was to be against them. And these immigrants are taking up, are they assimilating? Well yes, I did see that there was a decent rate of assimilation going on. Oh, a Bionian raid! For generations, loyal sons of Bionia have carried out holy crusades against the heathen Inca of the north. Some in Camelot question if armed farmers and herdsmen armed with antiquated weapons attacking the Inca Empire is a wise idea. Ah, eh, well. But they have become something of folk heroes in the citizens of the frontier. Our recent liberation of part of the Incan frontier a few years ago has only strengthened. How good would Gordon Ramsay's capybara and chips taste? It would be absolutely godlike lemon. Absolutely just ah, beautiful. But uh, another assault launched against some Incan villages near the Bionian border. Jesus Christ, are, are we the bad guys here? Remember when we were playing Plantaginia and it was the fucking the Apaches raiding us? And we were like, oh my god, these brutal raids, we need to put them down. Now I'm playing as Bjornians, angry Protestant English people, and we're raiding the natives. We're poking a gigantic empire that is vastly stronger than us and provoking it. <laughs> Are we the baddies? No, we're the goodies. We're Bjornians. We're right. You know. Uh, as far as we can tell, the raiders moved swiftly through the towns with fire and sword before returning home in triumph. Rumours that Prince Charles, the notorious uncle of King Edward, led the attack, gained the participants even further glory. Though most in Camelot have expressed their approval at the news, some fear that this incident may finally... Are we Israel? What the fuck? Let's not go there. Let's not make those comparisons. Let's take the three infamy hit and move on. But as for more decisions, we have the American Cone, which would be down into uh, Patagonia, Eternal England, which is the same as it is in vanilla, no, I say vanilla DOD. When you have a, a mod that's diverged so many times itself, there is such a thing as vanilla DOD, but that would be the same. That's forming England. Yeah, that one actually forms England. Yeah. Um, what are we getting next? Definitely ideological thought. We should probably get some culture text so I can upgrade the literacy and all that. We probably need to do that. Anger against the government. Good. Militancy, please. Or reforms. The Bionians don't think South America is their rightful land because of religious reasons are technically not the same. Oh. 
That was sudden. That was quick. We get... Where's my where's my mobilization boost? Oh shit. How can we do this? The Great Patriotic War is already happening. I didn't have an ally of Lotharingia. Oh my god. 22 brigades, they start with even more than me. Is this winnable, lads? Do we get a mobilization event? Fund the army. Put my three attack general. Best we'll ever have. We just have to wait for the Incans to move some stacks into a, a, a plane with no defense penalty and attack it with the three. It's all we've got. Mate, these mountains, there aren't even any mountains. There aren't even any mountains to defend. We've got semi-desert mountains, I guess, down here. And we can try that, but... Plus, I need to mobilize, you know. I, it wouldn't be good. It's fine, we're going we're gonna to win it. Following tensions on the inca Bionian borders. Huascar Inca, the new emperor. I thought it was Tashka or something. The new emperor of Tewantinsuya announced that to the Bionian representatives in Cusco... That this was the last time the Bionians did anything to threaten the Empire. The Imperial armies have been rallied, their Inca promising the total conquest of the Barbarians and the destruction of their capital. In Bionia proper, Edward I has rallied all the forces of the country to help defeat the coming storm. All men capable of holding the weapon are to join the Royal Army and already to Angl Anglican priests are at work. To convince the faithful to engage in holy war to defend the holy land of Bionia against the heathen Inca armies. This war will surely decide the fate of Southern America. To arms England, sons. Where is my mobilization modifier? Maybe I only get that if I go autocratic, eh? Oh, shit. This will be brutal, and this will be long. Don't they just full annex you if you lose? Yeah, they do. We'll have to do our best here with the limited resources we have. Um, I might have to mobilise on this low mobilisation. Oh, by the way, let's get a channel point prediction out there. Let's pause it, and let's give people a couple of minutes to vote. Right, mod, let's get it done. Very simple, will I win this war? People haven't had a chance to win big channel points for a couple of weeks, so we're right back into the betting. Mod check? Well, we're about to see. We're about to see. Mods? Mods, hello? Ladoge, Taco Man, or Psycho? Are we here? Well, it said in an event that Wakasha won the Incan Civil War, but then it said someone else was the Emperor when I got the Great Patriotic War event. Are we serious right now? Can I get some mod checks in the chat? You're not a true Bjornian if you can't vote in the poll. Taco, what do you... What do you unwed? Alright, I'm going to do it myself. I'm going to do the... Uh... Alright, forget it, mods. Okay, okay. I'll, I'll do it, I'll do it. And I'll do it myself, I'll do it. To be fair, being a Twitch mod myself, doing modding is it's easier than moderating a Discord, I'll tell you that. This shit is complicated. Right, well, I mean, it's not complicated, so it's easy for me to do it. Uh, outcome 1. Will Bionia win? Yes or no? You have two minutes. The Incan war goal changes depending on who gets on it. Well, this war goal clearly says Annex Bionia. And what does my war goal say? It says enforce a treaty. So who are the bad guys now? Uh, no worries, mods. It's fine. We got through it. We're fine.
by the way, speaking of the Patreon, and we're getting some big bets here. Um, I released the cosmetic tiers for Patreon. $1, $5, and $15. The problem is, ever since I engaged these tiers, people are, people are only joining at the lowest tier of $1. So, uh, maybe I should get rid of the tiers. They're only cosmetic anyway, and, you know, allow people to select their own custom amount. But $1 is the minimum anyway, you know. Uh, but I appreciate all my Patreon supporters very much, no matter how much you give. I always appreciate it. But we'll just, you know, preemptive strike. What do you mean? Well, we have to preemptive strike the Incans. Are they already moving in in the south? Ugh. Now, I don't know what kind of general the Incans are going to have. People are really betting on me winning here. People have bet more points on a victory. And even though it doesn't look good for me, people believe. By the way, in four years of the campaign, we've gained 77,000 pops, mainly due to immigration. I'll put 10 on the Patreon tomorrow. Oh, thank you so much if you're going to do that. Well, there's three tiers. $1, $5, and $15. Or I think you can still give a custom one. Bragging rights for the rich, don't get rid of them. Well, no one does the biggest one. 15. And, uh, yeah. I, Bjorn, leave. That's okay, Ladoge. Look, um, are we going to get a damn mobilization modifier or not? That's my biggest concern. Also, what's this? Scandinavia has a cheeky port here. Also... This is a new thing here. Be uh, Burgundy starts with a port. Fucking treaty port in the Incas. How about the Incas focus on that instead of me? Eh? Sunni Georgians. We're welcoming in everyone, whether they're Irish Catholic, um, a fucking Unitarian North Russian, or a Sunni Georgian. We're welcome them, welcoming them all. You know, with a melting pot out here. All right, well, this betting is over, so I'm going to speed to it. Army's funded. I'm holding out for a mobilization event, but I doubt it's going to happen. The pitch of war. What? Anyway. Uh, oh, inviting... We should... Yeah, we should settle this over a footy match. Absolutely. I'm going to... Where can I encourage soldiers? Will it allow me to do it anywhere? I just need soldiers. I need more soldiers. I cannot do it anywhere. It's over. I've got nothing to encourage. I'll just do clergymen in the capital. Get more literacy, I guess. Oh, get it up to 4%. Oh, we've got another doodle, though. <gasps> oh, that's a good one. Beyond an election? Wait, hold on. I can quickly get this one in. Boom, 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 boom. Sausage roll party. Um, how's the war going? Oh, they're here. Let them move into this dry grassland and maybe that's where I could attack them. Hilly grassland is one defence and then over a river. If they attack that, that would be good for me, so I'll move there. If not, I might attack that. I'm going to have to mobilise now, I just need the troops. The mobilisation is just de uh, depressingly low. Match of the day war comments are coming soon. I should rename all my analysis sections to match of the day. Absolutely. We're going to put my defence general, even though he's only a one. Martin Dundas. If this stack moves to Beorthric, I'll attack it with my three attack. If it attacks me in Rydale, then that's just good defensive battle. Although, I'm not positioned to actually directly reinforce it. There's a 20 stack up there. I'm a bit worried about the massive mobilization that the Incans might get. I've seen this before. I don't know if it'll kick in now or if they got the right Inca in charge. I don't know. We'll see about that. Smoking North FC pack? No. We need some more subs. 
who give us some come on Ingolins, and then we'll win the war. It's the only way. We have to. Depressing war exhaustion coming. Look, we'll have to take a short term L to get a long term W. It's just the way it goes. I hope they're mobilizing. I just saw it go up from 27 to 28. It's over. Right, where's this stack moving? It all depends on where this stack moves. It's attacking me in Rydale. It's attacking me across the river. Hopefully it doesn't have a mental attack general. Washkar Inca? Oh fuck. Oh god no. He's gonna have an insane attack stat, isn't he? I just see this. I just see it coming. I'm not gonna cheat. I'm not gonna tag switch and look. I'm not gonna do anything. If that's what's gonna happen, I'm gonna take it. Okay? Screw it. Uh, we're gonna position ourselves to reinforce. But if I started reinforcing now, then it would stop. Wait. I'm going to take a save here, okay? Sausage roll. We need some sausage rolls in this upcoming battle. Thank you, Tommy, so much for the new tier 1 sub. That is going to give us the confidence we need to win this. They're arriving on the 30th of May. I should start reinforcing the day before that, 29th. And then I can move in without the AI stopping their movement. That's how the AI works. 29th and I'll move. If they do end up sort of beating me in this battle, I might be able to just win through brute force numbers by reinforcing if the stack holds out for long enough. And it's the 29th, so I'll reinforce now. All four of my mobilized troops are in. Okay, what's this general? It's a four attack. Ah, but I got a good roll. Okay, I know that from now on, I need to be attacking the Incas, okay? Like, your mountain defense strategies don't really matter when my best defense general is a 1 and their attack general is a 4. That actually completely nullifies mountains. That that alone nullifies mountains. Now, what are the casualties looking like here? My roll has crushed them, and I just got pop growth from medicine. The roll! Fucking Tommy, your, your North FC chant gave us this roll. God bless. You did it. That was your job. And your sub. Your come on England gave us the role. It doesn't matter what they pull out now. I've done the damage. Right, we can follow up. They're going to Campbell's Forth, which is... Semi-Desert Mountain? Do I go in and hope for the wipe? Even though it's a mountain across a river? No, I'm not doing that. Fuck that. Fuck that. Actually, just fuck that. We'll just take the win there and move up and attack them to the north. I'm not following up on that. It would be suicide. Dundas in the fourth minute. What a screamer. What a goal! Wait, don't, don't reinforce. Whoa, 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 stop. Dundas, Dundas got it. Dundas, Dundas, Dundas. It's just one on. Dundas is one on one with Washgar, the goalkeeper. Dundas, he shoots. Goal! Oh, come on, England! Come on, Bjorn, FC! Wait, I need to... Wait, wait, wait. Let's put on some... Uh, let's, get, let's get the fucking mood right here, okay? Let's get some general better background music on. All right. Let's get the darts theme. It sounds football-y enough. This is football. Bjornia. Alright, we're going to recreate the battle. Goal sound effect, big stadium, soccer crowd cheering, best football fan sound effect, free. Okay, this is a reenactment of the Henry Dundas victory battle. Oh, Dundas! 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 Where's the sound effect? Dundas is one-on-one -on -one with Washkar! Dundas! Dundas is one-on-one -on -one with Washkar! Can he shoot? Can he shoot? That's fucking shite! That doesn't sound like an English cheer, that sounded like a fucking Spanish one or something, where they go, whoa! Uh, what about this? What the fuck? That's just one man! I'm looking for the right sound effect.
That's a good one. That's a good one. That's it. That's the one. Alright, next time we win a battle. If I win a battle. Okay, I right, consolidate. Attack this. Dundas. We're taking him. We're substituting Dundas off. He's off as a sub. Um, he used up all his energy. He's out of breath after scoring that goal. We're subbing him for Brian Cran or Robert Cranston. We're going to maybe fight the Battle of Eberson, which is the name of like five Brazilian players in real life, probably. Eberson. Alright, we're getting a quick wipe. Oh, that tackle! Oh, the tackle! Robert deserves a red card for that, but VAR has had a look on it. And he's, VAR has ruled that that foul against that cavalry stack is not a red card. But that red, that Inca cavalry stack has been cut, stretched off the pitch. It's a terrible um, injury. All right, let's let's move back. There's nowhere to attack around here. This is good. This is a guerrilla war, you know. I hope you realise this is a guerrilla war. Oh my god, they're fucking attack. We have to bring. Oh my god, they're attacking me in a hilly grassland, which is just a one. And it's Washkar! Fuck! Oh my god! Washkar! The goalkeeper is out! He's at he's now attacking. We just make him stop the make him stop the movement. I can't let this battle happen. They'll stop. Okay, good. Good. We've used a trick there, we've used great skills to avoid that. Henry Dundas. No, uh Robert Cranston has kept the ball. Taiwan Tinsuyu uh Washkar tried to tackle him and steal the ball, but Done this was too fast. Running down the wing to Kettlewell. In this guerrilla war. Which is what it is. No doubt about it. Offside trap. Is Waskar like a gigavax general? He's a plus four attack. That's all you need to know. He's a plus four attack. A devastating general. We cannot ever let him be in an offensive battle against us again. Where's the VAR? We want them to move into a pure plains province. We know that Washkar is a full attack with no defence. So my three... Okay, Hemingborough. Hemingborough is going to be the site of the battle. Alright, get in position. Alright, Robert. Uh, Washkar is taking the ball down the right wing. Down the right wing. He's passed it to Washkar down the right wing. Robert is moving down to intercept. Fun fact, Waska is a synonym of common Argentine slang. Thanks for the facts. Thanks for the quick facts. Right. Begin the attack. Begin the attack. Right. Um, these two stacks, fucking Harry Kane and uh, someone else. I don't know who else. Um, Harry Kane is moving in and uh, Robert is waiting there to arrive on the same day. Hopefully around the end of August. No, we still wait, so they all arrive at the same time. We don't want to like have stacks dying. Right, you arrive on the 29th, that's perfect. You arrive first, then they'll trickle in day after day after that. Right, we're going in. He tackles! He gets a bad roll, but the gen he is such a skilled player. He's such a skilled player that it's enough. Is it enough? Is it enough? Is it enough? Oh, oh, Robert. Oh, is it enough? Is it enough? Is he going to win? He shoots. Robert shoots. He, it's curling. It's bending like Beckham. It's curling round. It's curling. Will he win the battle? The enemy have no organisation. Their team has fallen apart. They're shouting at their captain. They've got no idea. Oh! Goal! Goal! Follow up! Follow up! Follow up! Goal! Come on England! Come on England! Follow up! Make it 2-0! 3-0 actually because we already beat them down there! Can he make it 3-0? Can he make it 3-0? Can he make it 3-0? We're following up! Speed 2! Don't arrive first! No! Don't arrive first! He fucked it! He scuffed the ball! He's, he's fucking tried to kick! Robert! 
He's fallen on his arse and Lashkar has fucking sprinted through past him. But is it enough? Can we still... Can we do anything about this? This has been a, a blunder. Hope your neighbours hear this and kill you next morning. They can't hear me. No way. He's wiped him! Robert has pulled out an amazing victory! He fell on his arse, tackled by Lashkar, but he got right back up. He got right back up, caught up with Waskar, slide tackled him from behind, took out Waskar. Fucking VAR looked at it and decided it was not a foul. And he's he's won. That is a huge stack wipe. They're down to 18 brigades. Huge. Huge. That is shoo. Right there. Let's build, by the way, back home. In honour of that victory where there's a new railroad construction happening back home. Shoo! Can we catch that cavalry stack? I got a messy, got a messy, got a messy, got a messy, catch the cavalry stack. No, we missed. Now we need to finish off that 21k down there somehow. Catch them later. We have to take the fight into the Incas though, and they'll keep building brigades. They'll keep substituting new players on as we kill them. We're losing soldier pops. We're losing fans. Some of our fans are leaving early. Some of our fans are leaving early. Is Risplith a good place to attack? Hilly Grassland? Yeah, I'd do it there. I'd probably have the, the brute force numbers to win. I'll attack there. Let's get more subs. We need that alert. We need the come on England alert more. This is uh, this is great stuff, classic. All right, these two should arrive on the same day if they moved at the same time. I can't believe we overshot it. Oh, what's this? The organization of the North Wheels. There's been some transfers happening behind the scenes during the game. The manager is making some transfers. With the occupation of the lands north of the the Auburn River. We find ourselves in control of the natural continuation of the wheels. Unlike the South Wheels, the North Wheels are inhabited by barely sedentary peoples and escaped serfs, such as these lands have never seen any particular settlement by anyone, save for the wayward missionary who no doubt got swallowed by the Shrobin Marsh. Well, no doubt a treacherous endeavour developing the North Wheels will prove a, a boon in the long term. Okay. This is... Hey, two, two regions up here. You know, we've been doing so well in the football. Two clubs, Wieldborough FC and Port Auburn United, have decided to join Bjornia FC and be merged in an acquisition. 18th of November. Ah, it's fine. Just go in there so you don't... Yeah, okay. Min-maxing, min-maxing. And we've scored! 8-4! 8-4! What a roll! What a goal! Oh, are we gonna win? Oh! Can we time it? Can we time it? Oh, it was a bit premature. The crowd have cheered before the ball rolled into the net, but now it has definitely gone in. And we have wiped the Incas down to 10 brigades. We have wiped the Incas. Let's unoccupy the land. Goal! The tech difference might have been contributing to this. Because Oh no, my god, they got two techs! What the fuck? We're just winning on pure skill, I guess. Um. Alright, no, Chad, thank you so much. If you're going to do that again with the Patreon, thank you so much. I would greatly appreciate that. Hey, good. Hey, Bionia, Bionia, just absolute finesse. The beautiful game in Victoria too. Keep an eye on the West. Oh no, are the Lotharingians? Oh, what's this? Oh, what's this? We didn't even notice it. But another Tawantinsuyu football club has entered the league in the south under Amawulu Pawalu. We'll attack him in Rydale. We didn't even notice that, that whole uh, team. We're going to organise a game in Rydale. Quick game. We'll take them down. What the fuck?
Beonia can win on penalties, so unstoppable. Alright, we'll come down and attack that in Rydale. That's a 30 stack. Washka Inca has taken over that stack. He's he's so fucking he got so much hubris. Wait, he's attacking! He's actually attacking. Oh my god, we need to swap out. We're doing an emergency substitute. But we're we're subbing out our centre forward Cranston to be replaced by our central defender. Ironclad central defender Dundas is back to defend against the incoming dribbling. Dribbling in the sense of being so fucking dumb. Uh, barely functional that they're dribbling everywhere and dribbling the ball towards us rapidly we'll need reinforcements for this we're taking we're putting some midfielders back we're doing a fucking 1-3-5 formation we're moving a midfielder from uh, midfield to defense 25th can we just stop this attack can we use some uh, positional awareness no we can't stop this attack it will happen Washkar is so determined to dribble the ball down here he, nothing can stop him dribbling. We'll have to put everything into this. I like how if you open the football tag on Twitch, you get a sea of football pitches in Football Manager, and in the middle of it all, you get a red map of Argentina. That is why we're so fucking unique. You don't get content like this or anything anywhere else. We're parking the bus. We've got five men in defence. Every player behind the ball... And it's going to be a tough battle here against their attack. They're passing it around, looking for an opening in our defence. But Martin Dundas, who's the captain, is holding strong. And we're about to win another battle. There's no way the Washkars can win now. It's 90 minutes plus stoppage time. There's no way that they can find a way through the defence before it's over. Another premature cheer from the crowd. There's, even though the Washkars are displaying great skill, there's no way they can win. And we will follow up all the way. Even if it's to the mountains. We demand an instant rematch of the second leg. The second leg is taking place in Kuchuche. We might be going a bridge too far now. But Br Robert Cranston is leading us on the counter attack. But wait, 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 stop. Hold on a minute. Is this counter attack? It's all arriving on the same day. Actually, I don't know what's better because Washkar is a plus four attack. I don't know if it's better if we arrive. Fuck. No, this is good. That's probably the best outcome. If we arrived first and got attacked by Washkar, he would have got his four attack on us, which nullifies the fucking terrain. We got a good roll. The, the counter attack is on. They think it's all over. Oh, it's all over. And we get pop growth. That victory was so good that all the fucking Bjornian football fans went home and shagged their wife and increased the pop growth of Bjornia by 1%. It's huge out there. Massive victory is taking place. If we lost the battle, we would have gotten massive domestic violence incidents going up, but instead it became a pop growth boom. Also, I, I hate the fact how, be, how the Incas will be able to constantly rebuild brigades. And that, my soldier pops. We've recruited a new uh, a signing, but he's been quite a lacklustre signing. He's bigoted. Cyril Gao refuses to kneel for BLM at the start of the game. He's bigoted. But he's just a really shite defender anyway. He's going to be sitting most, spending most of his career sitting on the bench. So he won't have a chance to not kneel anyway. So we're, we're following up to another battle down here. I don't... We might get there first. Uh, oh, what? Wait, what is that? We've got a multi-province retreat. We've got a multi-province retreat. Hey, referee! Referee, can we get VAR to look at that? That's offside. That is offside! Offside. Yeah, it's a, it, clearly... This is a multi-province retreat. Washgar Inca has been caught offside. Referee. And I can tell you mechanically why this has happened. I think the AI doesn't consider blue borders and they try to retreat to the province here, causing... A, a rule break. The referee has missed it, but VAR is pulling it up and looking at the situation. VAR is having a look at it. Uh, the crowd is anticipating. Yeah, it looks like it looks like he's going to call it. That is that is a straight red for Washkar. That is a straight red. VAR has overturned the referee's initial on-pitch decision. Oh my god. 
I happen to know that the Onius tag is Nan. I don't know why, but it is. Now we're going to occupy. <laughs> now that's genuine though. That's a genuine thing. If we're talking like more seriously, I mean, I would have to follow up again into another like hilly thing across there. It's bullshit that the AI could do that. Um, the referee, Nurse Reno, gives only a warning. Now, referee Reno, give that a straight red card. What's this, though? I think I've broken the AI. I might... Wait, wait, wait. Neo Anglia. Ah, right, okay. I'm going to re-host. We're going to be... Uh, we're, it's half time. It's half time. Half time here on uh, Bionia FC. I'm going to re-host because I think my tag switching broke the AI. And I know that would be unfair, so... It's half time. The uh, the fans are going up to the stand to get their Bovril and Capybara burgers. Um, I just launched the wrong fucking DOD. Hold on. Uh, it's definitely coming home. Ah, that's been great. Fucking great content. You don't get content like... There's no content like this anywhere else. This is unique. The Bionian fans are getting relentless. They demand a red card. Let's be fair here. The referee really gave in to fan the crowd pressure on that one. He, he was feeling a pitch invasion from people that you can see on my out-of-sync screen right now. Seeing as Bovril is meat, <laughs> meat extract, is it made of llamas? Yeah. Hello, Woven. Woven, you've missed two hours of fantastic content. You need to watch this VOD. Holy fuck. Right. Um, I just launched the wrong mod, so let's just launch the right one. The Bionia fans are running out of pints. Like, they're getting restless. They demanded a red card, but they got it. Washka was sent off. The Incan football pundits at home are calling it an outrage. They will be writing to the Bionian Football Association about that. But it's unlikely that any action will be taken by Edward the King. King Edward of Bionia is uh, he's the king of Bionia, but he's also the head of the Bionian Football Association. Play a Bionian anthem. What is the Bionian anthem? Oh, we've got a doodle. Oh, what's it going to be now? Oh my god, it's going to be something legendary. Oh, yes. we got a rendition of a Bjornian fan at home watching the game. We've invented TV for this, fuck it. People are at home watching the war. Just like we're watching Modern Wars now. On Twitter constantly, or whatever. Telegram, Twitter, YouTube. People are watching the war. The anthem is probably Jerusalem. It probably would be, but I'm not playing that. I mean, come on. I know we're LARPing and we're playing Bionia here, but at the end of the day, I am still a Scottish person in real life. I can't put myself through that, you know. Bionia have their own anthem. Well, what is it, mate? Tell us. And we're back in the game. Oh, I put this on the wrong. Goalpost. North FC Records. Okay. Let's see what this is. All right, what have you got? This is the Bior Rule Biornia. Rule Biornia. What if I Google Biornia National Anthem? Wait, what the? Wait, what? There. No, what the fuck? 
Are you fucking serious? What? What? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. Wait a minute. How come I've never heard of this? What is going on here? Wait, wait, wait. What is going on? Guys, there's actually a Bionian anthem on YouTube. Ten months ago. Basically, England 2 fictional content. Huh? Basically, when cannons are roaring, oh, it's an, it's an English Civil War song. Soldiers with swords in hand to the wars coming. Oh my god. Horsemen about the streets riding and running. Sentinels on the walls, arm armor crying. Petards against the ports, wildfire flying. When cannons are roaring and bullets are flying. It's banging. It's a banger. There's a Burgundian anthem. It's great. It's good. Captains in open fields on their foes rushing. Gentlemen, it's just um, an English Civil War song, I take it. Engineers in the trench are uprearing. Gunpowder in the mines. Go to the video, by the way. Humanist Mori. Go to it. Give it a like. We're beating the Incas, and this is what we're hearing throughout. The fans are chanting this. Comment it. Let, let them know that I was here. Well, that's just uh, crazy that this exists. I can't believe it. Right, we need to go back to the game and continue. We are, what, 5-0 up against the Incas right now? We've won so many battles. We're crushing them. This is an absolute thrashing, but it's not over. They're going to keep trying to substitute more men on and keep trying to win. So let's get the background music back on. Now we must unsiege and occupy the whole country. It's going to be a long process and they will still keep making stacks under fucking Washkar. He's been, he was red carded off, but he's gone off, put on a fake moustache and he's been substituted on. And no one's noticed. Can't believe it. Fucking cheating bastards. We're going to send Robert right up again to beat him back. Don't let them attach any more little stacks onto that. This background music is the official darts theme song. Oh well, enjoy that. Thank you for tuning in, Zyko. See you later, mate. Great to see you again. I think Robert is now confident enough to one-on-one -on -one Washkar. He doesn't need reinforcements to pass it to and do a cheeky one-two. He's going to cross to the midfield, across the river, and he's going to be able to one-on-one -on -one Washkar dribbled directly against him and new skill. Who's getting all the immigrants? Who's getting all the chippies? Colombia. Robert is running directly at Washkar. Can he one-on-one -on -one him? 
Can he one on one? Can he beat the keeper? Lashkar is getting more reinforcements. Another defender, the central midfielder, has uh, moved back. Chase the sun by Planet Funk. There you go. He's running directly at the goalkeeper. Can he win alone without reinforcements? Can he one on one the keeper? He gets a bad roll. Whatever that means in terms of football. And he's getting the, the enemies are getting cheeky reinforcements, and I'm getting a bad roll. No. Oh! Oh, he scores a nine! He scores a fucking nine! He scores a fucking nine! Oh! Follows up! He follows up! He follows up! I'm gonna send reinforcements. He follows up! He gets another smashing roll! Huge! He's chipped it over the keeper! It's now just him and the goal! Will he tap it in? Will he tap it in for the stack wipe? He does! But he, no, he didn't get the wipe. It was off the post! Off the post! No! He hasn't gone forward to collect the ball. It was off the post. Industry and Bjornia. What? Oh, what? Wait a minute. Bjornia, Bjornia, Bjornia. Oh my god. Research points. Oh, this. Yeah. We have to go for this. Education. This is like. Sorry. Just uh, turn that off. Mid-game, mid-war, we've got an important decision about the future of our country. We could sit there and get high pop growth, 0 uh, 0 0.2, which is big, until 1861. Or we could get education, political reform desire, and research points plus 5. It's a tough decision. Both of them are for 20 years. You know, um, what if I did just, unless this will lead on to any more decisions, like, no, I think we have to advise and get more. This might lead us on to getting better RGOs and stuff. Yeah, I'm going for that. That's increased our research points by a bit. Robert has gone back to catch his breath. Bewcastle. Nice. I'm concerned that that event, that, that choice, might lead on to further stuff that gets me RGOs and shit. I'm getting pops from immigration, at least at peacetime, okay? That's what I'm doing to make up for that, right? Plus, I got medicine. Washgar is coming back in for another challenge. What is Washgar doing? He's getting too full of himself after that victory. Robert is going in for another challenge. Another one-on-one. -on -one. Get in quick, 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 quick. Get in. Oh, fuck. Oh, he's gone in. He's getting huge rolls. He's, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Is that another huge victory? Yes. He stack wipes him. He shoots. He wipes. Oh. Washkar has been taken off the pitch again. Is there any stopping this man? Absolutely thrashed. Now we're going to be sieging down the Incas as fast as we can. They keep building so many new troops. It's unbelievable. The, the Incas have really great youth programs, building up local talent everywhere, just constantly throwing in more and more troops. Yeah, the football tag is the most appropriate on this stream. This has been the most football theme stream we've ever done. Oh my god, we're getting a reform. Immigrant attraction from 30 to 55%. Yeah. Or we could... Uh, nah. This one... Poor savings, immigrant attraction, minus five. Tell you what, moving out of peonage would also be great. Uh, 
This one has a negative education and everyday needs, an immigrant attraction as well. But the plus 20, I'd, I'd like to get them both, but which one first? I honestly think we're not getting immigration during this war anyway. So I'm going to go for this thing that just increases general stuff. I know, yeah, I know, Anna, you're right, but I'm, I'm going to get universal voting next. The political reform desire from that decision, or the event, whatever, was actually really good. So, I mean, ideally we'd like to end the war so we can go back to getting immigrants, but uh, we have to win. What's your preferred heel position to play? When I did play football ages and ages ago, I played as a central defender. I don't know what I would do now though, if I would be the same. How did he get behind the lines? No, seriously, how did that troop get there? He's offside. He's clearly moved into an offside position. I don't know why he's standing there. I don't know why Ronaldo is standing there waiting for a pass when he's in clearly in an offside position. It's Washkar again. Unification of the Belgian Confederacy. Ah, we don't care. Right, let's move the troop there so they can't build that brigade. Robert is going in again for another goal. He's clearly in an offside position. I don't know what he's thinking. Yeah, he's been ruled offside. He's been ruled offside. Definitely. VAR wasn't even necessary, Zero Orange. He's moving back into uncolonized land. Fuck that. Right, where are they building brigades? Let's move into this one here. I'm going to go for a quick uncolonized white. I'm a goalkeeper in both football and also for my school team in handball. Oh, very nice. Well, that's not very nice. Goalkeeping must be probably a very boring job sometimes. He's off the pitch! How does he expect to be getting receiving passes there when he's off the pitch? He's st standing outside. Robert has gone out for a throw-in. He's doing the throw-in back to Port Auburn. Look how many brigades they're still fucking building all the time. Jesus Christ. This is what I don't like about the, like, the whack-a-mole after you wipe their initial armies. It's constantly. I'll move up there and occupy that and prevent a brigade there. Oh my god, they just built a cavalry there. It's never ending. Yeah, Komodo. Goalkeeping can be a highly criticised job and a thankless job. Because it's all down to you and if you miss something you get blamed even though your defence should be doing shit and preventing it getting to you in the first place. They've already got another three, uh, a 9k stack out of nowhere. We're moving into a mountain. I'm not going to be able to do anything about that. I might be able to split this. Force a split between their stacks. Like that. And then attack. Textbook delivery. Textbook play. Textbook play. The Finlandic Revolution. I don't care. Don't, we don't give a fuck what's going on up in the north. North America. That's another successful foul on another player. We're gonna also going to foul this guy. Alright, now we'll get universal voting. That's going to give us so much attraction that we might even get immigration during the war at this point. That's huge. Robert is flanking down the right wing all the way up to try and hit the uh, the the, uh, the Incan goal in Cusco. All right, can you hit that twenty fifth? No. Spanish wars. This stack needs to catch its breath and reinforce. 
Oh, we need to go down there and prevent a brigade being built. How's the war score? Huge. We might even be able to piece them out soon, actually. It might be almost full time. So many fucking... There's another one. They're about to get a 12k stack. Let's prevent this. And we just managed to get that one just in time. Right, good. Good, good. Another one! Fuck off! So many. We need to keep running down the ring. Running down the wing. I just let that one get past again. Fuck it. Lashka's back. Oh, that's too many clergymen. We've lost a lot of soldier pops now. Let's encourage a bit more. Lashkar. Another two stacks. We need to prevent this. They're taking the piss. Oh, there's no way around. It, fuck. There's absolutely no way around to that. What? Oh, this is taking the piss. They've got eight stacks again. We need to kill them here. I don't, we're taking so much attrition doing this bullshit. Cold desert mountains? That's not such a big defense. We could hit them there. War score, it's got 17k. War score is huge. We're winning 44 nil. How can they not just give up? The full time missile hasn't blown yet, though. Huh, 11th of October? We might hit them there. They've got 12 men on the pitch and no one's noticed. I think previously when it's been a 50-50 we always get there first, so... No wait, do we? No. We beat that one anyway, good. Bad roll, but it's just a little battle. We'll still win, surely. Okay, good. That was... They didn't even get wiped. Referee. Referee. This is the phase of the war where it completely takes the piss. Um, they just build up a massive stack. I die of attrition. Bad first touch. Call the game referee. This is a scandal. You general? Bad general. You need to go back and catch your breath. Frankly, Robert Stack needs to press on and try to get to that one there. Arthur Brown is the fastest player. He's oh, they will peace out. They will peace out. War is over. We did it. We won. 51-0. That is just an outrageous score. You don't get victories like that anywhere else. Enforce a treaty. Wait, do I have a decision to burn Cusco? Is that a real thing? What if I held this piece off and then do it? Play a victorious anthem? No, we're fine. I've already played it. Now we're going over to Gary Lineker where he will analyse the game on Match of the Day. But do I get a decision to burn Cusco? Does this... I don't think it's worth going on. I need to... I need to piece out the war and get immigration back. Burn it. Nah, fuck it. We're enforcing the treaty. I need to get my immigration back, okay? Demobilise. They're coming home as heroes on the team bus. They're getting a hero's welcome back in Camelot FC. We need to fix the economy. Team finances. Oh god, what's this? Colonize oh, 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 oh. Yes. Oh my god. The conquest of New Marcia was followed by an intense propaganda by the Bionian state to show the rest of the civilised world that their conquest was just because of the Inca aggression. Well, it's, it's kind of true. The Incas were looking to completely annex us. New Marcia proper and especially 
The port of Edwards Landing. Did we just rename all this shit? We will, probably. Targeted for propaganda actions which showed the progress of civilization to Beonian settlers. The seizure of local lands by the settlers and the Beonian administration were, of course, never mentioned. In the mountains, far from international observations, the Beonian army was free to destroy... My, our football hooligans, after winning the victory, have gone out and absolutely trashed the Incan cities. The football hooligans are out in force. The North FC Beonian hooligans. They've been absolutely set loose on Incan villages and towns and cities everywhere. Yeah, this is a... Uh... Welcome back, Sneaky. We are deleting huge sections of the Beornian, the Incan population. It's been it's so soon that we haven't even calculated how many pops they had to begin with. Uh, what's the biggest town around here? To give an example. Kiri Kiri, okay. We will rename that. Kiri Kiri, wait, have we renamed it already? No. 74k here, okay? Let's see what that turns into. Right? 38k. Gone down by about half. The cleansing. The Treaty of Camelot. To the astonishment and horror of all worshippers of Inti, the Bjornian savages have bested the Imperial armies. This is from their POV. Why did it unpause? Um, a series of losses along the frontier allowed the Bjornians to invade the interior to the point where Sapa Inca was forced to sue for peace rather than allow further devastation of the countryside. The hooligan, well, the hooligans were rampaging so much that the Incas had to just forfeit the game before it was at the final whistle. The Beornians demanded that he travel in person to the barbarian capital of Camelot. There, in a shameful ceremony, he was forced to publicly acknowledge the monarch as the rightful king of Beornia, England, and New Mercia. The appellation for the frontier regions which they have now annexed. Great, great stuff. The Mapuche have launched another revolt, so we've got this going on down here as well. They've broken free from the Incas. We can probably we can probably take them. Ah. Great. Now Population resettlement. Oh, it's happening. We get to rename all of that. Oh yes. Fucking beautiful. We even have a land of opportunity to take at some point. We just renamed all well, did we? There's still a place called Quilton Tupu. We can't have that. But that's Edward's Landing. So... And we're getting massive immigration. So what I want to see are people arriving here, assimilating, and then moving out to the provinces and resettling. This might be a glitch, actually. This one province here didn't receive any of the uh, modifiers and things. It didn't get renamed and it didn't get the population. That might just be... A tiny oversight. Just one province. Doesn't matter. Oh my god. Glorious. Maybe reduce that a bit and make money. The Incas are also giving us some war subsidy. War indemnities of 40 a day. It truly is coming home. We have to watch out for their rebels, but otherwise... It's also a good thing because they give us militancy now. They're going to be pretty angry at what happened after all. Nagubu resettled. Mountain enclaves. Now, are people actually moving? Yes, people are moving. Oh god, people are moving. It's going to happen. We get cores on all of this as well. Yep, beautiful. I wonder if there's going to be a second war. I wonder if there's going to be a rematch. A second leg. But the immigration is huge. Population might even reach a million in a few years. Population growth has doubled. This is huge. They're building Weatherspoon franchises to bring the hooligan settlers, mate. That's hilarious. Fucking amazing. We got another doodle. Celebrate. This is a bit of artwork that was used. He's... He's fucking... This bit of artwork was literally in the decision. He's live editing this stuff. This is amazing stuff. Thank you, Zanmo, again. <laughs> uh, we're setting up Greg's. We're setting up Weather 
Dunes, we're setting up Cost Cutters, Poundland, Tesco, taking over the fucking land here. You can see the Bionian population start to rise. Oh, we should build some... Definitely build uh, well, the port in Edwards Landing. Absolutely. So, this region became Southern Sussex, Warwickshire, Cumbria. Um, did we already have Wessex? I think we did. Yeah. And that's, um, that's ideological thought. Don't you need to play the Mupata in the next match? The Mupache? Yeah. They've, they've split off and formed a new team. Bionia needs to have a match against them to show them who's really boss. But I'm thinking, will I have uh, a decision for it? Will I have some kind of LARP to go to them or something? Anyway, though, next tech. Uh, idealism. Just go for it. Get idealism. It's important. One thing's for sure, though. That war took a massive toll on our team. We lost half our soldier pops, if not more. It was quite devastating. It wasn't easy to pull off the victory we did. The team are burnt out. They're tired. They're not going to be able to play another game for a long time. They need to rebuild, recuperate, go on a fucking training camp in Dubai or something. Recuperate. Also, there was a there was an Amazon Prime documentary made about that match. Like, what, what are they called? This is it or something? It's not been 10 years. Bloody hell, it's not been 10 years yet, as he says. I'm sure that's how Merger uh, intended to pronounce that. It sounded like it. We're just getting quite a few more soldiers back, though. We're getting them back. I'm pretty sure there's LARP around the Mapuche, and I think it's potentially a very dangerous LARP for you. Well, we'll come back to it. 24-hour stream when? What do we need to do? I don't ever want to do a 24-hour stream, mate. I don't think anything could convince me to do that. Maybe some extremely large monetary sum. Maybe. You know. But, uh, fuck that. Fantastic victory there. We can lower the funding of the army, build up money. Factory, we, we are actually producing a cement factory though. We are producing a cement factory. The capitalists managed to get machine parts into their project. These places have become colonies, by the way, which is an important distinction. When they fill up nicely with Bionians, which uh, I don't really see them doing yet. Granada reconquered. We'll have a look at that in a minute. Um, are we getting people? Yeah, there's Bionians moving. There's some. Um, no assimilation. Okay, there's some people moving. So, Spain conquered this. That's good. Is that good or bad? I think that might be good because um, Quito has become a big powerhouse in some of my playthroughs. Whereas Spain might not be as strong, like they won't get immigration. And then this new Grand Colombia thing happens. Interesting. Masca land is independent as a puppet of England this time. By the way, just for the rec this is, for the record, this is the latest version of DoD Fan Fork. It has been updated maybe a couple of times since I last played it. They have been reworking some stuff. They've actually done some reworking of things di based directly on some of my playthroughs. They've they're, they're, they either have fixed or are fixing some of the Plantagenian things, which is nice to see. Um, so yeah, that's what happens when you play a really active mod that's like really interesting when people do content on it, getting the feedback. It's great to see. Then we can put that off for now. Classic artwork. Spain seems bad, but it's hard to say. Because Spain kind of tends to erupt into civil wars, they become a bit of a backwater. It might be better for me. You don't need that land anyway if you're aiming for England. True, but any any expansion route to build me up into a stronger position would be good. Oh, by the way, the RGOs that we've just conquered here might be good. We've got gold. 
We've gained a bit of sugar. We can build a rum factory there when the time comes. We're going to build... Um, fucking... I don't know. What What's the most iconic rum-like drink that you get in England? Well, um, we got copper. Quite a bit of gold. Well, it's not that great, but it's an improvement, RGO-wise. Did they fix the clothing factories being built everywhere? Well, that's an AI capitalist thing. They can't really do anything about that. Lager factory, but which lager, specifically? Here, actually, machine parts are okay. We're getting machine parts, but then there is a cement factory. Um, there's shit going on in Spain that might lead to civil war. Stella, yeah. But we're actually building a cement factory in Wessex. So we will be able to sort all this. Beautiful. Uh, Gunpowder and ammunition there. Stella factory. Captain Morgan's, yeah, yeah. Captain Morgan's factory is going to be built there. Mapuche reactionaries. Well, it turns out this little Mapuche state, which has grown, is uh, having some issues. Warm carbon factory. We're actually going to be good on industry. We're able to completely build industry however I want. We have that luxury. Now we've got a cement factory and... Wait, do I need to get a decision? Why, do, why don't I get my second national focus? Hmm? I've got three national focus points. Maybe I just need more pops. I don't know. Okay, well, listen everyone. I'm impressed. We've made it two hours and 38 minutes in. And now Lemon has raised Victoria 3 for the first time. We're not going to talk about it too much. Might as well give it a passing mention, though. Um, will you play the 1.5 update for Victoria 3 when it releases? I'm torn on whether I'm actually going to bother. Because, for me, Victoria 3 is obviously becoming more irrelevant. I give much less of a shit. They're just making ridiculous decisions and it's crap. The 1.5 war update is a, a bit of a... You know, it's not good. It's a nothing burger. It's not fundamentally changing war at all. It's making weird decisions, adding micro to stacks and all that. But it is making some improvements, obviously. It's adding two battles per front and things and, and just improving how the system works, but it's not making the system different. But, um, oh yeah, there's still a channel point prediction. Fuck, this is what happens when uh, it's actually a mod who can end the channel point prediction himself. Actually, you can't because you bet in it. But yeah, we won. We won. Some people will receive a payout, but the winning side actually put more points into it anyway. But yeah. I care much less about Victoria 3. This 1.5 is not good. But I am slightly concerned. Did anyone notice... Um, Paradox on their official, their new official Victoria 3 channel released a tutorial for the new 1.5 war system changes and they managed to get a content creator shill to do the tutorial for them. They, they made a five minute video. Did anyone notice it? And I'm really disappointed to see this. And I'm, I'm blackpilled because I didn't think after the disaster of Victoria 3 and what happened that any, that well, probably some would, but I didn't think content creators would rush to do another sp sort of sponsorship for Victoria 3 after what happened the first time when the game came out. But there you are. Um, I'm very brief on this, but Ludi has done a tutorial for Victoria 3 on Paradox's channel and he's just... It's a massive shill. I don't know. I mean, it's a fucking... a sponsorship sort of thing, collaboration, but for a free update. But... Uh, Everyone's got a mortgage spud. But look, how far will people... Uh, look, I completely respect. I, c I respect that they're all allowed to do that, and it's fine. But um, 
I, I really don't like the whole, the whole thing. How do I put it? You know, it's completely fine and they're allowed to do it and I don't have anything against them actually doing it, but, you know, shilling a game that's crap and turned out to be a disaster on launch and then coming back to do it again. But maybe there should be a little bit of pushback against it somewhere. But uh, I guess what I'm saying is you're allowed to do it and you can do whatever you want like that and uh, shill it. But I've lost some respect for uh, that. And for a free update as well. Paradox are paying someone to do that for a free update. That doesn't bode well for the actual expansion that they're releasing in March 2024. They must be... I'm worried that Paradox are going to be able to pull everyone out for that again. The same people that all did fucking the release of the game are going to come back for the expansion DLC. And it's just going to be another story of just the marketing making that DLC into a success regardless of its own actual merits. I'm just worried that that's going to happen again. But if it does, it does. And I hope people realise... You know, I hope people see it all for what it is and, uh, you know, people that have been telling the truth the whole time and calling it out get a bit more recognition. I don't know. At the end of the day, we can talk about that as much as we want, but the more important thing is this. The hilarious Bionia playthrough, Open Vic, which is happening, the Bavaria series, all the positive stuff is much better to focus on. You, f you find that you hit a brick wall with Victoria 3 stuff. You know, Paradox are obviously completely dead set on the ridiculous route they've gone down. Um, the best I've been able to do is just sort of shitpost and have a laugh along the way. I'm not changing their minds. I've never really set out to. We did in the really early days, like reacting to early Dev Diaries, it was more an idea of trying to steer it in some kind of direction and help. But at this point, we just sort of laugh. We just sort of just point out fucking shilling, the money, the marketing, and just have a laugh. Anyway, that's that. Fuck that. If I do decide to cover 1.5, I'll cover it and we'll talk all about it at that time, but not now. So, now that we have colonies, we can choose our settlement policy. And I think civilizing mission is objectively the best. Education, assimilation rate plus 10. Culture research, which I'm doing now. Uh, settlement gives tax solution, blah blah blah. Yeah, just, just do civilizing mission. And you get a lot of prestige for hitting that, which puts us up nicely. Yeah, that's big. We get a boost to our current idealism research. Fantastic stuff. I mean, to bring, to bring that shit up again about whether I cover Victoria 3 or not. The thing that gets to me is, you know, let's say, for example, loads of people come out and market and advertise and shill the Victoria 3 DLC. And if I'm not there also doing a video about it, covering it from a, a different perspective, a, a more objective perspective, because I'm not being paid to do it. If I'm not there, then who is there to give the opposite opinion? Like, when Victoria 3 really dropped, even though it got to mixed reviews and people found out it was shit, there were barely any content creators or anyone pointing this out. There, there was such a lack of voices criticising the game. I mean, there really were. I mean, everyone was doing a normal good video on it. I guess there was Isora Productions, he was the only one. And he's big, he's big, don't get me wrong. The only, the, what, are, so what I'm trying to say is, one of the instincts sort of making me lean towards cover this 1.5 shit and then the DLC in 2024 is the fact that some people rely on me to actually you know tell them how it is and you know there might not be any other opposing voices telling them telling them the truth from a Victoria 2 fan perspective people would be missing out on the truth that sort of thing you know or maybe not the truth but just the Victoria 2 fan perspective I don't know Someone tell me what they think so I'm not just fucking shouting at a brick wall. And be honest. Uh, what's this though? This is quite a big fucking event. 
Do something that doesn't lose me pops. Oh, well. Changing the police reform is important, because these can, some of these can be good. National police is the best. That one's fucking amazing. But then again, I don't want to lose militancy yet. Actually, our militancy is really high. We have Kula nationalists. Which is the one up in the north here. So there are some risks. The actual Incas have lost their pores on that. Which might mean that some of these people are subject to potential assimilation if they don't have a core under them. The, the, uh, the Quechua people might be. The Kola have a core of Kola here. But the Aymara and the Quechua might be subject to assimilation. Well, I think the chat about sums it up. No one has anything to say about anything I've just said about Vic 3. No one has anything to say at all. So, might as well just not bother with it. Move on. Um, unfortunately, ah, shit. The cement factory doesn't get any coal. So we're not producing any cement. That's unfortunate. How are we ever going to get coal? Where are the nearest good RGOs in this damn continent? That's not coal, that's coffee. And we can't use that to power anything. We can make people work faster, but... There is a lot of sulfur up here. Uh, we have to colonise to get resources. There's a lot of gold. There is some copper. There's some iron here. There's one province of iron in the entire continent. Jesus. Like we have, just like when we were playing the African thing, we might have to go to, to Africa, to get some of that. I'm gonna try building a couple more transports. The economy is booming, so. Does Vic Three even have mid-war interventions yet? No. Riots send in the army. Don't send in the army. Don't kill my pops. But of course, we won't get clipper convoys in order to build that. Oh shit, yeah, the militancy, the massive militancy is giving us the potential to do some social reforms, which is huge. Um, let's use this. Uh, ooh, I think we could just go for education system. Yeah, very good. So there, there's, there's drastic RGO shortages on this damn continent. Is there any coal? Is there any coal? Plurality? There's no coal on the continent. How do you... I mean, look, I guess maybe it's realistic that this is how it was or whatever, but how do you expect to play the game? <laughs> How do you expect there to be gameplay here? Scandinavia might fear me even though I want to take the Falklands from them. Uh, if Scandinavia is going to be the only one to fear me, then I'll have to take it. They are literally an ally against the DM. Maybe, but maybe they'll happen through events. I have to wait for that. But there's just no knowledge of if that will happen. I don't know. Pretty sure Chile has coal. Well, I just looked at the RGO map mode of coal. Maybe it spawns. Maybe it spawns. But right now, nothing. I could really do with another national focus, though. Where is that? This RGO balance is nutty. I mean, even vanilla has something down here, doesn't it? But, you know, there's there's going to be reasons for it. It's that, you know, the RGOs... Maybe there, there is coal in the ground and more iron in the ground. But we just haven't found it. We haven't prospected for it. Well, yeah, David, you're right. I mean... 
just to touch on this one more time, I've seen people in my own community asking me, some people have at some points pinged me saying, Spud, what do you think of the 1.5 update? Are they finally fixing warfare? The fact that some people in my own community might think that 1.5 actually is the improvement for victory multiplayer, which it isn't, that worries me. If some of my own people in my own community uh, who have watched my previous videos are thinking that that is what that is, then there is a bit of a desynchronization between the facts and what people are thinking. Because let me tell you, 1.5 doesn't fundamentally change the direction of the military. It just implements the current shit vision better. And the current shit vision is what we objected to. So they're doubling down on it and increasing... They are improving the implementation of that vision. Uh, and they are doing it in ways that I predicted they would do it, of course, because they are the only ways to do it. And uh, But there is one really weird thing about how they're doing it, which is that they are adding micromanagement back to creating stacks and stuff. A lot may have heard that they've fixed it. Well, that's the problem, because people are hearing that they're fixing it from... Victoria 3 sources. Victoria 3 shills. They're hearing it from fucking tweets from the actual Victoria 3 account. They're, they're hearing it. They're not hearing it from me because I'm not bothering to make content about it. Nothing of value to mine in the entire Andes. Well, there's gold, okay? There's gold. We've got gold. Let's at least be happy with that. At least that's a nice step in the right direction. No, not really. Like I said, adding micromanagement back to the creation of stacks was widely regarded as the problem with Vic2 multiplayer, where you had to constantly remake stacks, mobilize, mobilize stacks, sort all your stacks. People disliked that. And Victoria 3's answer to that was to completely abolish it initially. Where my answer to it would have been to add optional uh, macro builders and stack automators and stuff like I suggested in the War System video. But now they're adding the creation of stacks. But they're adding the tedious element of the game without adding the good fucking satisfying element which is actually fighting the battles with your own input. That's my point about 1.5. Uh, and people... If people can't realise that independently without me telling it to them, you know, frankly, should I even bother? If people can't figure that out from themselves, why should I give a fuck? Come on, think about it. But if, if Paradox is going to push Mark, put money into telling people that in order to falsely get them to either buy the game if they hadn't already or play it again, then that's just not very good. It's not true. People need to know the facts. Anyway, can we let's maybe just drop the subject. Come on. That is actually enough I've said about 1.5 now. That's everything I needed to say. Everything other than that is guff. Especially the fucking South America update. Sure it's nice, but it's guff. Anyway, move on. Let's go. Waiting for the economy to improve. Waiting for the Mapuche Wars and waiting for the next Inca Wars. Let's see what happens. Waiting for some coal to show up. So next plans? Well, in terms of this country, just wait. Wait for what happens next. Maybe. Is there any coal in Africa? On the coast? Uh, there's not really any accessible coal. Um, we could go for fucking Madagascar. Uh, Madagascar? Maybe. Could go into Africa, take out oil first or Inri first, and then move in and take that coal from there. Alright, here's what we can do. We can go in and attack Inri, but they have so many allies, it would be easier to attack fucking no. Attack Adama directly. Nah. Nah, it's all shite. And I don't even have the ships to go there anyway. Well maybe I do. But uh, they won't be able to sustain. 
How do you feel about soldier pops being tied to particular regions of Vicky 2? Do you think it would be better to have a national soldier pool? No, 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 I don't think so. I don't even like it when soldier pops are tied to entire regions. National soldier pools, no, fuck that, that's just manpower. Victoria 2's uh, system is the pop system and how they're tied to provinces. That's the amazing, unique, beautiful thing about Vic 2. Why abstract it away from that? The main complaint about the way it works now is that you'll have wasted soldier pops from how small certain soldier pop concentrations are because of how small like it is on a province level. But I just think the alternatives are worse and the way it is now is the best implementation of how Victoria 2 works and it's good. Plus, tying individual soldier stacks to individual provinces gives you more of a sense of connection to the to the land, to the country, to the people in that province. I like it that way. Um, PDM, I think, in the past had it to be region-based. When it gets to later in the game and you get massive amounts of soldiers, though, and it's region-based, you'll barely, you, you might even not be able to build all the soldiers in a region just because of recruitment time. Say you're able to build 20 brigades in a whole region. It takes ages to get through that. Burgundy recognizes our independence. Ever since we finished dissolving our bonds with the Burgundian crown and with Lotharingia, our relations with Onvers have been strained. To put it bluntly, Burgundy did not acknowledge our existence, referring to us as a colony and insurrection. Yes, escalating odds, yeah. All right, Inkelim, thanks for the research. Let's get that. Let's get that. It's just a bit strange having small leftover bits of soldier pops lying around. Yeah. For example, like, I've got, I don't know, this region here. Let's say it's 19% Mapuche. Let's say there's 400 Mapuche soldiers there. They wouldn't be able to make a stack out of that, so they'd just be useless. Uh, that's the downside. That's the natural conclusion, the small downside of the system. But the system overall works best as it is. So we just have to sort of put up with that. Right. Burgundy recognizes us. How about this fear us? The Ausholung. It's the hallowing is happening. The hallowing is coming. Might as well try and increase relations. Do I have the suck up to a great power decision? Thing. Um, is it in extra decisions? Is it in government decisions? What is my national value? Order? That's not very good. The way order is in this mod is not very good for me, basically. Right. Uh, pay respects to a great power. But this would go to Scandinavia. Burgundy went up to Cordial, but Scandinavia is actively influencing me a little bit. So I'll just sit and wait for now on that and see which one gets closer if Burgundy actually bothers to start influencing me. Next, next. It would be cool if higher tolerance would allow mixed units. Maybe, maybe. Um, I don't know. It might be. It might get very complicated if you start doing this, and I wouldn't actually suggest it as a serious move to do. But just as a theory, like maybe tying. Say you've got 500 Mapuche soldiers in one province and 500 Mapuche soldiers in another province. If there is some way of putting them together to make one combined soldier, that would be a way of solving the problem to an extent. But that just gets really complicated and weird, even though it sounds good on paper. It probably wouldn't be that good to implement. Anyway, let's do free press. And our next tech... Um... I say we get military plans to increase our mobilization. Let's put out more youth 
camps and that to get more fucking young tra uh, football talent trained up to join the squad. We need to increase that mobilisation pool and get another mill tech. Because this is going to be a brutal place. We might even have to fight Lotharingia at some point. And they're much stronger than me too. Interchangeable parts for the wool factories. Yeah, that would be a good tech. It's not that urgent to get that though. Especially when we're not able to build factories. Due to the uh, cement factory issue. It wouldn't be that good to get it. Yeah. I think getting the wool factory is a sort of luxury thing. I don't mean it literally like luxury clothes, but it's like a luxury thing to have. We don't need it. The soldiers only reinforce using pops in the province they were recruited in. Yeah. Like, these guys here. Soldiers from Bewcastle. This is showing up as red. They're Bjornian soldiers from Bewcastle because there's 908 Bjornian soldiers in Bewcastle. Oh my god. German immigration. So if we go to Bewcastle and look at the pots directly of it, you can see the pop. And there are 908 Bjornian soldiers there. And this is me directly showing you the beauty of Victoria 2 where you can go in and see the exact pops that we're talking about. The problem is that there are 124 Zuri soldiers there, which will probably always be useless. They will never do anything. And they're fucking illiterate. But that's just the way the game works, really. If there was some way to unite this into one, then this soldier wouldn't come up as red. Uh, the reason I even have this Bucastle soldier is because... The soldier was already created. It might have been made at the start of the game. I might have recruited it earlier when the soldier pops were over 1,000. And then they took casualties in the Inca War, went below 1,000. So now it's going to be slow to reinforce that, if it reinforces at all. Um, and by the way, 1,000 soldier pops creates 3,000 soldiers in the army, which is a bit of a complicated, weird move. But that's what it is, and that's what we're used to. Anyway, uh... Germans have been immigration, immigrating for some time. Our port cities have been deluged by German immigrants, fleeing political upheaval. And of course, the hallowing. The Great Famine. They come from diverse backgrounds. They practice various forms of Christianity and Judaism. Most people see them as one riotous mass of savages. That's not nice. Some political cartoonists have compared this migratory wave to the barbarian invasions of Rome. They've... Brought radical politics down to slavery. Wait, do I have slavery? Do I? It's outlawed. What are they on about? I've never... Hey, we don't have slavery. What are those German immigrants fucking on about, mate? We don't even have it. We do not have slavery. What? Will I be able to reinforce these two five percenters up? I doubt it. Is there a way for Bionna to adjust the border with Lotharingia? Oh, I don't know. There probably is. Maybe there's a war we have to fight. I don't know. We basically just have to wait and see. Sausage roll slavery. Wait. No. Sausage roll man down there. We're opening up Greg's. How's the immigration in here going? There's really not many Bjornians moving to South, Southern Sussex. More pop growth. It's a generic event after the Halloween, right. But though it's not really generic then, is it? It's uh, based on an event chain in the Halloween. Anyway, uh... Okay, really, the 500% immigration push hasn't really done much. It's not really happening. It's not really coming home. I will, however, build lots of railroads there. Our points are going up. We're rising on the world market. We might reach a point where we do get coal coming in on the world market. Uh, and then we'll be able to build cement in the cement factory, which in turn will allow us... Tesh it. Oh, what's going on there? 
I don't even know what Teshin is. Apparently, apparently this tiny country with three coal provinces is producing a large part of the coal in the world. Happy Halloween. The Halloween. The Halloween is coming, smiley face. Uh, what's the coal demand? Supply 1900, demand 2900. Oof. We're unlikely to ever get coal until other countries around the world start to improve their coal tech, if they do that. If the AI does that. Conquered all the chippies from here to Timbuktu. Well, it's been a good... We've been at it three hours now. Solid stream. We will be wrapping up quite soon. That, that would be a great part one to this Bionia campaign. Um, I, either I'll continue it tomorrow or Saturday. I'm not sure. And I'm also reaching out to Padchucker about getting some games back up with him. So I might do that on Saturday or Friday as well. But yeah, either way. I'll try and keep you updated on my announcements channel in Discord. Come on, make a tiny bit of cement, please. Just anything. Can we make cement out of something else? See, yet? I'm not going anywhere yet. I'm still playing a bit more. When Bavaria series, that will be on next Friday. I'm just unable to make the next Bavaria video for tomorrow, but it will definitely be done by next Friday. And by the way, the monetization issues have more or less gone. I'm always a bit paranoid that they might be back, but they seem to be gone. COD zombie stream when? Uh... When people that I want to play with are willing to do it. If Big Weevil and Zombie and Spambot ever want to do that again, I am 100% down. But it's hard to organise because we're not really... I don't know, we don't really play much. We're not in any Vic 2 campaigns together. You know, it's hard to organise. I'd love to though. Maybe with you, Komodo. Maybe we can get a different team going. Me and you, Weevil. Um, hmm... I'm going to get the Unions one because that upgrade up unlocks more demand for social reforms. The immigration is huge. A dream lost and forgotten. Oh, the Cowboy King happened, sort of. L'Etat Cadien, Louisiane. That is an, this is a path happening to Plantagenia that I have not seen. That's different. Wait, is that... That's either a different path from the one that I saw when I played the Cowboy King, or it's an updated one that might have been added recently in recent reworks of Plantaginia. Komodo, you're always in touch throughout the entire modern community, don't you know? Um... Danuk says in one in 6.12, the Bjornia renaming decision has also been disabled again till Atalus fixes it. Oh. Um. Mm. Actually, I don't think Plantaginian reworks has happened yet. They're just currently being worked on. I haven't seen any releases lately that have it. And then we're going back to September now, which is after. So. So it doesn't look like there has been an update on Pantagenia, so this is like a different path from anything we've seen. Um, and I wonder how this one happened differently. This might be what happens if this three-way civil war fires, like the Cowboy King happens, after the Belgians won the First Arcadian War. I think the Belgians won, so that might be this. When I played Plantagenia in order to fire the Cowboy King, I think I won the first uh, Belgian war, whatever, the first Arcadian war, and then played Cowboy King after. I think, no wait, no, didn't I intentionally lose that war? I don't know. I don't know. Alternatively, I think this is actually, this is the regular three-way civil war that I've already played, but the main Plantagenia 
just happened to get a different government type. Right, maybe that's it. It's, it's become a presidential dictatorship, it's different government type. But it technically still is Plantagenia. Maybe. The Belgians have to take the more radical war path for the First Arcadian War. I don't know, I, I haven't played the Belgians. Um, and since I've already played Plantagenia and formed Arcadia, I don't think I do want to play the Belgians, because it's not really going to be that unique or different from anything I've done. Even though it's probably got an interesting path itself. There's other playthroughs I want to do. What playthrough would I like to do next? I was thinking of either I was thinking of playing Spain next, actually. Uh, my old friend Spain, which if you remember my initial Spain TGC run, and then my Spain Zombies TGC run, that country hasn't been very friendly to me, at least in TGC. But I'd love to play Spain in this mod and try and do a reconquest of the Americas. That would be a cool playthrough. It seems like this Spain, AI Spain, is like halfway done. They managed to win in South America. Oh yes, escalating odds, yeah. I would also love to play as the Islamic Caliphate of Zural. Definitely. Uh, escalating odds, that's another one on the list. And otherwise, what else? Uh, was there anything else? Anything else jumping out at me that I wanted to play? Uh, maybe Vinland, maybe the Skraling Council. Because they can get more extra cores and... I think the Skraling Council is the only native North American nation with serious flavour, but I don't think they have that much. Hmm. The Rhineland Revolt. Well then, okay. Maybe a uh, maybe a Moscow one. Maybe doing that that uh, crusade, theocracy one. Maybe a, a laugh. Ching Chu Reconquista. Nah, Ching Chu doesn't have flavour or lore yet. That's going to be added down the line, I know that. So, But the uh, the Zurao playthrough into reconquering China would be uh, fantastic. Anything in Africa interesting? I would have to ask the DoD fanfork people which country in Africa is the most flavoured. I don't know. The South African ones probably have some stuff. Um, but that's all I know. The Middle East is yet to be worked on, and the Balkans is yet to be worked on. I think they're doing Balkan reworks now. Uh, Crimea into like Tatarstan or something would be good. Um, just playing Scandinavia, even though they start off as one of the strongest great powers as it is, might be good. Just play a nice, easy, oil-piloted country that's the strongest. Might be just a, a relaxing game. Burgundy's flavoured. You can make some huge empire as Burgundy and conquer France, more of Germany and stuff. It'll be a big map painting game. We're well on our way to a million pops though. Massive. 528 KB audience. When do I get my national focus? It's a fucking ripoff. Brexit means Brexit. Give me a fucking national focus. Oh, what's this? Scandinavia has troops in their Mapuche place? What is going on? We have to take them down in order to take, to take tapped O, by the way. We need that shit. Fucking need tapped O. They are gradually sphering me, actually. On the one hand... Oh, Great German War. Finnish Independence War, nice. Um... Wait, 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 hold on. Now, fighting Scandinavia would be impossible. I mean, actually holding the Falklands, I, I don't know, they would have such a big navy. That would be such a fucking difficult war to pull off. And there's no other source of tickers or anything. It's a difficult one. There's nothing I can do. If I can get a European major great power ally, also Burgundy is completely falling apart. If I could get a major European great power ally to do it. They're at war with Bohemia right now, though. I don't think this is the right timing. I don't think I'm strong enough to do it. 
I don't have a navy. I can barely even transport my... Well, I can. I'm actually getting clippers. We could do some kind of overseas thing somewhere. We're, we do have the transports. We could go for Africa. And it's not like the African country, the uh, thingy we played before. I think we'd be much more competently able to fight this. Well, Ying is in. Bionia doesn't have a coast. Uh, Bohemia doesn't have a coastline, so I don't know why they would need their navy to fight that. I don't know why they'd pull their navy back for that. I guess I could get Battle Wars going out of the troops they have here. Hmm. Oh, they. Oh, shit. They've intervened and made a puppet out of the Mapuches. Oh, that's a plot twist, isn't it? That's why they're here. Now, the good thing about that is. That the blessing in disguise could be that that is a source of tickers and more war score in an eventual war against Gandhi. But something that would be good to have against Gandhi would be allies. Spain. Dual monarchy would be ideal if they give a fuck about me. Do, wouldn't the dual monarchy be too much of a... I don't know. They're not the right ally. They're the dual monarchy. They're the people I actually want to take England back from. It's not time yet. The time doesn't feel right to go after Scandi. But maybe the time is right to go on an African expedition. But the time is actually right to call the stream now. It's been a fantastic one. Great to be back streaming. I had a nice couple of weeks that I needed to have um, as a break, you know, real life. But we're back. And it was an absolute pleasure to have a very fun stream with all of you members of chat. And I especially thank the, uh, the tips, the channel, the moderators. Three moderators couldn't even take down one obvious Russian spam bot. Damn. I love my moderation team, but that was a shot that was shocking. Shocking. Can you take the Falklands or perhaps Australia? Well that's what we've just been talking about. Africa is the natural place to go into in this game right now. For some colonies. If we can hold it and win the war and maintain them. Which is the uh, tough question. Maybe, again, just like last time, Loango might be the best place to go. One brigade. Iron. There is iron up in Tawantan Sioux, but I don't know if I'll ever get that anytime soon. But yeah, fun to, I, I really had fun on that stream. It was great. Nice to have you all. Absolute pleasure. Sorry about accidentally streaming on YouTube. Uh, that won't happen again. But yeah, thanks everyone. Su uh, support me on Patreon. You get bonus Victoria 2 series content, bonus clips, deleted scenes. All of it is there for you if you join me on Patreon. Throw the Patreon link in right there, just as we go. Yes, Chabeth, you're here just in time. If you want to drop me your Prime, though, just before I go. You know, I'm all ears. Wait, Chabeth, do you want to become a mod on the Twitch as well, since you're a mod on the Discord? Thoughts on the YouTube ad madness? I don't know enough about the situation to opine much. I did give my views on ad block stuff before I went on my break though, on previous streams. And I don't really have much more to say than that. What I did say. Surely you were there. Alright, no worries, Charbeth. Does Bjornia get England and Bavaria legit? Well, that would be a spoiler. Tune in for the next episode, next Friday. Will it happen? Will the dual monarchy pull back some kind of comeback? Who knows? We'll see you next episode. Alright, no worries, Travis. I'm glad you could tune in for the last two minutes of my stream, though. You got some good entertainment out of these minutes. You got to see me staring at, like, uh, the Atlantic Ocean and just chatting as I end the stream. What better content can you ask for? Now, go and mute someone on the Discord. I'm sure there's some rule breakers out there somewhere. No, but uh, seriously, thanks everyone. Great stream. Had fun. I'll see you all for the next one. Maybe tomorrow. Maybe Saturday. I'm sorry that I'm so ad hoc with my streaming times and I barely plan ahead. But uh, I don't know. I, I find it hard to commit to a schedule for it. It is what it is. I'll try to keep you updated as short notice as I can. Or as, as, in, as in advance as I can. 
on my Discord announcements channel. That's the best we can do. Thank you so much, everyone. Bye. Any last minute subs? Any last minute donations? You can do it on the ending screen. Okay. Right. Cheers. Bye.